So this is the fifth meeting of the Asian Soil Laboratory Network. It will last for three hours and it will be conducted in English. Before to go through the agenda, I would like to give the floor to the chair of SILNET, Dr. Gina Nilo, for the opening remarks. Dr. G Dr. Nilo, the floor is yours. A pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Warm greetings from the Philippines. I requested Sir Filippo as well to flash the message for the sake of those with slow internet. Hi, Dr. Ducrecia, Queen Sister Nock, and everyone else. I miss you. <laughs> okay. Warm greetings from the Philippines. A blessed day to everyone. It is with great pleasure to open this virtual gathering, the PIF Asian Soil Laboratory Network, seal net meeting we are indeed blessed and privileged that despite the COVID-19 we are able to meet virtually physically healthy and with committed hearts in fulfilling our responsibilities for our countries towards sustainable use of our soil and water resources through our support to FAO Global Soil Partnership in particular, the mission of PR5, harmonization of methods, measurements, and indicator for the sustainable management and protection of soil resources. Through SILNET, I am pleased to announce at this point that I am the newly elected chairperson of PR5 for 2021-2023 in the Asian Soil Partnership. With your support, together, we can elevate and expand the basic contribution of soil laboratories through this Asian network, SILNET, to all other... To all other pillars of action in providing quality data that are interchangeable and comparable across locations through the harmonized test methods. We have expanded our scope of parameters since we started in 2017 from the five basic soil chemical parameters to assess soil fertility, such as pH, EC, organic carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Now, SILNET is contributing to soil physical and biological parameters to glossoland, such as bulk density and soil moisture content, and to the measurement of microbial and cymatic activity and soil respiration. At the moment, the Philippines, together with Thailand, have prepared video presentation on test methods for organic carbon using Walkley and Black method to be used for the training on test methods that will be conducted this year and onwards. Likewise, with all other test methods that have been adapted by Glossolat, I take this opportunity to invite all of you in all these undertakings, be it as participants to spread the value of harmonization of test methods on your country and also to volunteer and take the lead in seal net and glossolan activities where you can best contribute. Last year's seal net meeting was also held virtually on June 30 to July 2, 2020. 
we were enjoined by around 255 laboratory staff from 18 Asian countries. Today, let us witness the fruit of last year's meeting as we are supported by all the laboratory staff from the 24 member Asian countries of SILNET. Indeed, we are rapidly expanding and I would like to emphasize the value of networking within your country or the establishment of the National Soil Laboratory Network or NASUNAN as this network and member laboratories are able to access information, training, and even to participate at Glossolan proficiency testing programs. I congratulate each one for having done this in their own countries and to all others. I encourage you to go and multiply. There is always strength in unity and blessings overflow. With this, I would also like to acknowledge the participation of the blessed and strong women and men of all 43 member soil laboratories of the Philippines National Soil Laboratory Network, which we call Phil Nasulan. Our network is composed of the Department of Agriculture 15 regional soil laboratories, and seven DA national agencies, eight private soil laboratories, seven state universities and colleges, two DA satellite soil laboratories, two provincial soil laboratories, and two research laboratories. Looking back to 2020, we have conducted the very first meeting of the Phil Nasulan, which focused mainly on BSWM's twin objectives in support to all soil laboratories. First, a strong network, and second, the establishment of laboratories of global standards. Looking forward to November of 2021, as we mark the network's second annual meeting, we will focus on the theme, the role of soil laboratories in the implementation of the National Soil Health Program. In relevance to the vision and mission of Global Soil Partnership, I can see that the National Soil Health Program can be used as platform of Asian Regional Network Program in support to all other pillars of action as integrated in the National Soil Health Program in the country. To name a few, these are first, harmonized protocol on soil sampling and mapping of soil reference and monitoring sites as characteristics of soil health, which is under pillar four. Also under the NSHP is the establishment of techno demonstration on sustainable soil management, which is under pillar one. And third, research on the assessment of impacts of these technologies on soil health, productivity and income, which is under pillar three. And lastly, for pillar two, awareness raising, adoption of soil doctors program, and the mainstreaming and institutionalization of the soil health program through policies and investments. And of course, foremost consideration is the role of soil laboratories in providing quality science-based data through the upgrading of laboratory facilities and equipment, provision of training, and 
the adoption of harmonized test methods among the network of soil laboratories at the national, regional, and global scale, which are in particular the mission of Pillar 5 through Glossolan and SILNET. As you can see, I am sharing this talk, not a mere exaggeration of our achievements. But let this be a source of inspiration and guidance to direct and unify our efforts towards meeting the mission of FAO Global Soil Partnership to improve the governance and promote sustainable management of soils. I encourage everyone to, active, to actively participate and commit to the goal of Glossolan and SILNET. Let this be a challenge to all of us. Let us be intentional in making our national reference laboratories and all other network member laboratories as the center of excellence of soil laboratories in the Asian region. I call it CESLAB. I humbly ask you, my colleagues, to put our best efforts to this great endeavor of the Food and Agriculture Organization in bringing us here together at this meeting to share one common platform, one common goal, connecting our soil laboratories and promoting the harmonized test methods to support various decision-making bodies at the international level. By this time, we should also have realized that soil laboratories are important. We serve as the backbone of science-based soil data which are being utilized to support sustainable management of our soil resources. As the chairperson of SILNET, I thank the FAO on behalf of 24 strong member countries of the Asian Laboratory Network, SILNET, indeed, we are all committed and dedicated to sustaining SILNET. Again, on behalf of SILNET, we raise our hands, our convenor for Glossolan and SILNET. We thank the Director General Ku Dong Yu of FAO, Ms. Sasha Ko Oshima, Deputy Director of Land and Water Division, Mr. Roland Vargas, Secretary of the Global Soil Partnership, Ms. Nopresha Kaon, and Mr. Filippo Benedicti, Secretariat, Global Soil Partnership, Glossolan, and SILNET. I would also like to thank other participants from the GSP Secretariat who joined us today. Ms. Carolina Oliveira and Mr. Yusuf Yigini. We also thank my twin sister, Ms. Nokmani Sobana, Glossolan Chair, Mr. Rob Dehaer, Glossolan Vice Chair, and Mr. Christian Hartman, Glossolan Advisor, for their never ending support to Steel Net. Likewise, I would like to acknowledge my vice chairs, Mr. Sanjay Isrivastava of India and Ms. Susuin of Myanmar, who have strongly supported me all the way from 2019. Lastly, but not the least, of course, as they say, save the best for last. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to our director at the Bureau of Source and Water Management, who also serves as the chair of the Asian Soil Partnership, Engineer Pablo M. Montalia. 
for his earnest support to my role as the SILNET chair. Also, to the entire Bureau of Souls and Water Management family and the hardworking and competent staff of Laboratory Services Division. Great job. <laughs> Indeed, this is a year of new challenges. Gina, you were muted. We cannot hear you anymore. Gina, I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. Gina. Filippo, can you try to unmute her? I'm trying, but uh, yeah, I- Yeah, it's not possible to unmute. We can just request. Well, scroll down because- okay. <laughs> Gina, you were muted. We could not hear the final part of your speech, but we could read it uh, on screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would like to thank you for your nice words and uh, appreciation. We also appreciate a lot your, the work you are doing for the network and the partnership. Now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Nobman and Suwanang, the chair of Glossan, for her short please opening <laughs> remarks. <laughs> now the floor is yours. Thank you, Rukesia. Good morning, dear all friends. In this, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this CUNET meeting, which this year, the meeting organized in Zoom platform and will focus on the decision-making since the trainings will be provided in the form of the webinars throughout the year. Ultimately, less or less specific work plan will be developed also during the meeting. CUNET is going to have four years old now after the establishment in November 2017. At the time, the situation of the lab in Asia is a black block with a blur picture. We don't know much on your neighboring country lab's performance and how they are working on the same testing methods. But now we have more clear picture and know each other better. We have a group of friends as unit at network that can share and exchange the knowledge. We are succeeding in a way that four years ago, we never could have imagined. Our work, our work put emphasis on the importance of the harmonized soil characterization, data exchange and standard through the lab network under the pillar five as a mean to what the achievement of the objective of the pillar one to four. As you already be, uh, uh, known, all these pillars mentioned rely on the integrity of the soil data through the harmonized methods and the measurements for the sustainable management and the protection of the soil resources. I am pleased to announce that in just over four years after the establishment of the coastal land in 2017, we have come out with a lot of outcomes from the network. Some of them are already present by uh, Gina speak. And uh, we also provide an important number of the SOP that we can work and harmonize to work in the same way with the good quality control. Many training courses were held in parallel with the regional meeting and solar free access with China under the preparation. Absolutely, I need to extend my deep appreciation to the GSP FAO, the GSP Secretariat team for supporting the efforts to further develop the role of the national mechanism for promoting the harmonization of the soil testing methods and quality data and the empowerment of the network. I want to particularly thanks to Gina, the director of the BSWM as a chair of the CUNET and the two vice chairs, Susu Win, 
from Myanmar and Sanjay from India for their commitment and leadership for the encouragement provides for his work. Thanks also go to the Land Development Department Thailand and Bulu of Soils and Water Management Philippines that support for the shooting of the two video of the SOP on organic carbon in black gray and black. Finally, I would like to express appreciation for the invaluable logistical support provided by many staff members of the CIVNET in the contribution in support by providing the information as needed and also contribute to work as a leader in the process of the harmonization of the SOP and to be our trainers. We have come a long way. We see you giving your precious time with your family to give that time to our activity. Please be assured that your delicate time and your value is noticed and much appreciated. Now we will move forward together to continue to improve our quality of data and also working in the same way so that our data that we have produced will benefit to the users stakeholder and for policy makers. High quality and compatible data would improve the evidence-based decision-making in many fields, including sustainable soil management, food security and nutrition, climate adaptation and mitigation, and reliable SOC stock calculations. This year, we would like to extend our work downscale to the national labs in order to provide the opportunity to the local staff to learn and improve way of working. The national network will help to fix the barrier of the language problem and also provide you the opportunity for the local labs to present your challenge and needs from country level to the consideration of the coastal land. And I am pretty sure that your involvement will be even more stronger. In our side, we have provided many documents to support for this establishment and benchmarking via our Gosoland webpage. I am pleased that SUNET and Gosoland are providing us a platform for, collabor for collaboration and harmonization that is aligned to the global and international standards. The attendance of our lab managers today from all over Asia is a sign of the commitment to what achievement a globally harmonized means of ensuring integrated inside data and information. Finally, I wish you all a very successful meeting and assure you of the full support of myself, Love as a white chair and our secretariat team, Lucasia Filippo and many others that I cannot mention here or Thank you. Thank you very much, Nock. Can I ask everybody to please turn on their cameras and give us a big smile. We are going to take a group picture before we officially actually start with the content of the, of the meeting. So please all cameras on and the big smile. Filippo, tell us when you're ready. Okay, big smile, please. Second, I'm doing the second screen. Okay, done. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you, Filippo. Now let's uh, quickly review what we will go through today. We will start with the presentation on updates from the Global Soil Laboratory Network. So this applies to the world network at the global level. And thereafter, we will really look into updates from Asia. So from the CNET network, and there will also be the time to discuss about uh, ongoing projects in the region that are linked to soil laboratories and the actually writing and application of project proposals at FAO. I would like to really 
tell you how to mobilize uh, financial resources within your country, uh, approaching FAO as a donor. Uh, around uh, in one hour or so, we will also talk about uh, regional specific needs, and we will close uh, by reviewing the position of CLNET in Glossolan, as we do every year, and uh, uh, also discussing the new governance of uh, the network, because the mandate of uh, Dr. Nilo as a chair and the mandate of uh, Ms. Susu Win from Myanmar and Sanjay uh, from, uh, from India as uh, vice chairs is, uh, is ending this year. So we need of uh, new chair and vice chairs. And uh, that will be basically our, our day. Uh, I will, uh, I will uh, do the first item. So let me share the presentation. So Glossolan update. Um, I would just like to quickly recall what Glossolan is about to those members of Glossolan that are new to, to the network. So we were established in 2017 to harmonize soil laboratories data and methods and to build the capacity of laboratories in soil analysis. So ultimately we work on three main areas. Uh, of work indeed. So one is quality assurance and quality control. And uh, this deals with execution of uh, uh, external uh, quality control and training on the execution of internal quality control. Thereafter, we also harmonize standard operating procedures. So on uh, really methods of analysis, but also other topics related to the life in the laboratory, you know? for example, health and safety. Uh, ultimately, we work on equipment. So we provide training on equipment use, maintenance, and purchasing, and uh, um, we establish a bartering and donation system that we are kicking off. So we, we are still figuring out how to, to get it to work, but uh, we have it there. And uh, under these thematic areas, we also have our uh, sub glossolan initiative on soil spectroscopy. Ultimately, last year, we also established another sub-network that deals with fertilizer quality assessment, and this is called the INFA, so the International Network on Fertilizer Analysis. Glossolan operates uh, through regional soil laboratory networks called Resolance, and uh, indeed, the, the regional network for Asia is still net. And the countries that uh, fall under this network are reported on screen. Then uh, from the region, we get to the national level. In, uh, in the countries, we have member laboratories. And uh, especially we have one laboratory that uh, Gina discussed pretty well. That's called the National Reference Laboratory. It's a laboratory appointed by the uh, chair, or actually the focal point, sorry, the focal point of the GSP. Uh, of the country to the GSP. So it's basically your legal representative at the Ministry of Agriculture, usually, um, that is tasked to drive actions and downscale Glossolan actions at the national level. Uh, these are the information, updated information on the status of growth of the network as of uh, the 12th of October. As you can see in Asia, we currently have 117 uh, member laboratories out of 740 laboratories that registered to the network uh, globally. To learn, more and more, to learn more about the laboratories that are registered in Glossolan, you can, you can see them on an interactive map available on the Glossolan website. Uh, indeed, I kindly invite you to consult uh, the Glossolan website because we do our best to keep it updated and to basically publish everything in there. Also frequently asked questions so that, uh, that you can really learn more on our activities and the way we implement them. The website is available in the six UN languages. We are finalizing the translations, but uh, still you have it in English, uh, French, Spanish, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese. The same applies to the Glossolan publications. So these are also translated in, uh, in the six UN official languages. 
but also in local languages, depending on the translators that volunteer to do the, the job. So if you would like to translate any glossary material in your local language, please let us know and we will guide you through the process. It's uh, well, once that you do the translation, basically all the work will be on us. We will take care of all the editing and publication so that you can really use this document to trigger activities uh, in your country. Uh, so please let us know if you would like to, to become a Glossolan translator and we will support you. I take this opportunity to thank all of you that already served as uh, translators and are helping to downscale activities at the national level. The same applies to video. We are um, trying to record training videos for all the material we publish. And again, I would like to thank the laboratories that already volunteered uh, to, to prepare this video. I am especially referring to Thailand and the Philippines because they prepared the videos on the implementation of the Walkley and Black method. We have a manual on how to record these videos. And again, we are available to support all laboratories that wish to, to, to start this, uh, this activity in their laboratories. This is actually also a good way to promote your laboratory because you will have space to present your laboratories and show the world that the, the good work you are doing. So based on the decision made at the fourth Glossolan meeting, so in November last year, all resonance meetings will, uh, uh, will focus on decision-making only. This is a big change because usually we combine decision-making with training. However, due to the fact that the, the trainings uh, uh, are being conducted, actually all our meetings are being, are being conducted online and uh, the availability of, of trainers, Glossolan decided to split these two topics. So resonance meetings will be only on decision making. All trainings will be implemented in the form of webinars that will be available in different languages and at different times so that uh, the, we can really train at the same time uh, multiple regions that speak the same language or fall into a same time zone. Uh, we, have, we created a page, a web page on capacity development so that you can be informed all times about the trainings available and ongoing. Uh, While well, the page is still under construction, but the content is updated. So what you will see on this page is a list of trainings for specifically for different thematic areas. Now, for example, wet chemistry and dry chemistry, and then we will have health and safety and much more. So you will have the title of the training, the date and time and language of the training, information on the trainers, and an abstract of the, of the session. So before the webinar takes place, you will have the details of the event and a link to register to the, to the training. After the webinar is implemented, you will still have the details of the event, the presentation and the recordings of the, of the training, the webinar, so that you can access it anytime and uh, revisit the content and uh, an highlight eventually that is basically for press releases. So these are the webinars we currently have on, on the calendar in, for wet chemistry. The first session that you see was on uh, Olsen, uh, on the implementation of the Olsen P method was implemented last week, and it was in Spanish. As I told you before, the same training will also be available in English and eventually in Arabic, Russian, Chinese, and so on. Uh, and it will be here. Um, well, the, the date still has to be confirmed, but it should happen between the end of October and the beginning of November. This is the full list of, uh, of trainings we have on the calendar for wet chemistry so far. Uh, the webinars on spectroscopy so far have been organized only in English. We started from the very basic and we are getting to more complex uh, um, aspects of the matter. Uh, we already implemented five uh, webinars uh, and the next one will be on the 28th of October on measuring reflectance of undisturbed soil surface in the field under laboratory quality. So again, Glossolan would like to thank all experts that made the themselves available to prepare and give webinars 
Indeed, many webinars will be provided by laboratories uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Asia. And again, I, I mentioned just because it comes to my mind, the laboratory of Gina, so the laboratory of the chair of uh, CLNET that will provide a lot of trainings. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank Nina, Gina and, uh, and all her team for the su great support uh, she's providing to the, to the community. And I take this opportunity also to make a call uh, to you all to please volunteer if you feel like, uh, and uh, you have, you know, like to feel like to, to become trainers of uh, CLNET and, and Glossolan. We are really looking for good experts that feel like sharing their knowledge. And eventually you can organize also something in, uh, in local languages or dialects, especially for those countries that have a large population. I'm thinking also about India, for example. We can really support you in the organization of uh, these trainings uh, uh, for the national level for, you, for your country. What we are doing in terms of harmonization of standard operating procedures, well, um, based on the decision made at the Glossolan meeting last year, in 2020-2021, Glossolan is focused on the harmonization of, uh, of uh, these parameters, so physical parameters, chemical parameters, and ultimately we started to work on biological parameters. We are a bit behind on this work because the network is overloaded, but uh, we, we hope and aim to have the, um, the, the documents, so the standard operating procedures, uh, ready and published by the end of the year. Um, this is quite important, I think, for you to know. Uh, as you might have seen, we made a call for laboratories to participate in a, a proficiency test, a global proficiency test, that uh, we start uh, um, but basically in November this year. Uh, we, we, we have 280 set of soil samples available that are divided, basically they are organized in 10 uh, self-sealed bags of soil labeled with a unique code. So each bag contains 10 grams of homogenized soil material. Uh, up to date, we received 249 expressions of interest to participate in this exercise from uh, Glossolan members. And uh, out of uh, these 249 expressions of interest, eight laboratories told us that because of different reasons, they cannot uh, participate to the PT. Laboratories that will participate to the PT will be selected based on ge geographical balance. In this regard, we will make sure to involve at least one laboratory per country, which means that more than one laboratory per country can participate if soil samples are available. Then the number of parameters in a list that we provided that interested laboratories can, can measure, the method of analysis in a list, based on a list that we provided that in the interested laboratories can perform, and then the principle that first come, first serve. But in this case, we have more samples than uh, um, more sample than uh, laboratories that wish to do the analysis. So these, uh, we don't see these criteria to get in place, but uh, let's see. The decisions on the laboratories to participate in the PT will be made by the end of this month, so by the end of October, and the shipment of the soil samples uh, will, uh, will happen in November. So all, participate, all participating laboratories will be notified upon the, well, the outcome of their application. And uh, the ones that ultimately will participate in the PT will be asked to analyze soil samples for organic carbon, available phosphorus, and total nitrogen in this order of priority. We will not ask to do any replication of the analysis. All samples should be analyzed only once. And uh, very important, laboratories should not use uh, the, the soil material. So you, I told you, you will receive 10 bags of 10 grams of, of soil each. You should not use these 10 grams to do one analysis only. Um, you should perform all the analysis. In this regard, we are we, in the instructions that we will send together with the samples, we will give you an idea no, of the recommended amount of soil to use for each analysis based on the glossolan SOPs. 
So in this regard, we kindly ask you to decide what analysis to perform before starting to do the analysis and to make very well your calculations. Because for example, this is an example, you might decide to analyze carbon by Dumas, available phosphorus by Olsen, and also by Bray-1 and total nitrogen by Sheldahl. This is fine because the amount of soil you would need based on the information in the Grosson SOPs is 10 grams. Otherwise, if you decide to also perform the analysis by Walkley and Black, um, you would not have enough soil because this would require 11 grams of soil. So please plan very well the way you, the, the analysis you will conduct before starting to uh, process the soil. All results should be submitted through um, an online platform that uh, we created. And uh, in this regard, that it's not that everybody can have access to this uh, to this uh, platform and can submit uh, results. Only participating laboratories will be able to log in to the platform because they will receive a unique identification code. Uh, some uh, update on the glossolum procurement to, to close this presentation. Well, laboratories from developing countries that participated to the Glossal PT in 2019 and demonstrated not to need of any training were granted with some laboratory equipment based on their needs. So ultima ultimately, in Asia, Glossolan provided or is still provide delivering uh, equipment to India, Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Information on the equipment uh, provided to laboratories are available on the Glossolan website. Again, we have a page dedicated to equipment with an interactive map in which you can see the, the name of the beneficiary country and the beneficiary laboratory why they are receiving the equipment. So in this case, for example, their participation to the Glossal PT in 2019. Then the address of the laboratory, the equipment that was donated, the donor, and the status of the delivery. So in the case of the Philippines, for example, uh, the equipment was uh, uh, delivered. So thank you for your attention. I don't know if you have any question. You can uh, please uh, either raise your hand or write your questions in the, in the chat and uh, either me or Filippo or the presenter will, will answer it. Um, I will answer the question in the chat as you write them. Now, because we are late on the agenda already, I would like to give the floor to Filippo for, um, for moderating the second session, I believe I'm going by memory. Yes, no. What is yes, it? yes. Here. Yes, Philip, the floor is yours. Thanks, Lucrezia. Can you see my screen? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also would like to welcome everybody to this uh, fifth meeting of the Asian Soil Laboratory Network. For those who don't know me, I'm Filippo Benedetti. I'm working at the GSP Secretariat and I'm supporting Lucrezia with the implementation of the activities of the Global Sulan and all the regional networks. Mm, I would like to recall very briefly what Lucrezia already mentioned on the growth on the, of the global network of Global Sulan. As you can see from these graphs, um, uh, since two years ago, the network almost doubled its size and um, we are now reaching almost 800 soil laboratories from all over the world uh, as members uh, of the um, of this network very good result and as you can see from the right graph sealnet so the laboratories from the asian region um, is like is the one of the biggest group in the in the in, in the in the in the world uh, together with those from latin america europe and africa um, indeed, even the members from Asian countries uh, had growth, had growth in the last year. And since the last uh, CILNET meeting in 2020, we, uh, we registered um, 57 new laboratories within the network. Um, of course, we would like to continue growing, so we encourage you to um, 
we kindly ask you to encourage other laboratories operating within your country to register in the network, to be updated and informed about our activities and to be involved in our activities. Uh, in this regard, I would like to, um, to stress that there are few countries in which we don't have any lab registered. Uh, in Asia, we have a uh, few countries in which we don't have uh, lab registered in Glossoland. Maybe that these countries do not have in our lab, but we think some of them have. So if you have, we are trying to work with the GSP focal points and representatives in the country to uh, have uh, members register in CINET and in Glossolan from the country listed in the upper list. But if you have any partners or colleagues working in these five countries, please um, let us know and encourage them to register. Um, while as Lucrezia mentioned, and also Gina mentioned, we each country has a national reference laboratory uh, who is uh, which is in charge of implementing local activities within the country and all of you all of your countries um, have it just Afghanistan doesn't have it yet but indeed also in this case we are working closely with the GSP focal point trying to nominate someone to have a reference lab to contact uh, in the country to implement activities um, in my presentation, I would like to briefly uh, recall what I already presented last year on the national networks. Also, uh, Dr. Gina Anilo, uh, the Silnet Chair, stressed very well this point. Um, as you know, Glossolan is organized is in um, regional networks, but we would like to move forward and scale down more the global, the global activities to the local context. This is why we are trying to encourage countries to uh, establish the National Soil Laboratory Networks, also called NASOLAN. Why? Because we would like to improve. This is a powerful way, uh, maybe the main way, to improve the glossolan activities in the local context, develop programs and activities that can better face the local needs of soil laboratories in each country, and of course, reach a larger number of laboratories so the network can grow and we can have more labs inside because again more labs we are we are we have in the network uh, more knowledge is shared more activities can be implemented so this is very important for us to reach more countries and thanks for your to your support we can encourage other institutions in your country to join the network uh, very briefly i would like to recall what are the tasks of the nasoland uh, so indeed, as I just mentioned, um, we want you to motivate the other laboratories to register in the network. Uh, the national networks should facilitate the implementation of global activities to the, to the national context within the country. Um, advertise all the activities, all these events, all the training opportunities, all the initiatives that global um, organize uh, to. Um, the country laboratories and encourage them to join them. Uh, indeed, we would like you to organize training within the national networks uh, in order to transfer the knowledge uh, that some of you are getting from this uh, the, to the global training or the resolution uh, meeting where we talk about different topics. It's important that this knowledge uh, that you acquire during this meeting are then transferred to the other soil laboratories operating in your country. And this can be done during the uh, Nazolan meetings. Uh, and Nazolan meetings, of course, is the best way to talk among you, colleagues operating in the same country. As you can see from the image here, uh, colleagues in Philippines are doing this um, on a regular basis. So they discuss about common challenging and needs, and they think about how to implement uh, a work plan, how, what to do to improve the condition of soil laboratories within the country. And this is, is being done in many other countries in the region and should be taken as an example from those countries that didn't start the activities of the national networks yet. And of course, when you talk together, then you can um, support each other developing um, project proposals to mobilize and to get financial resources that can be uh, used to implement the activities that you, uh, that you think are important to tackle and to face the issues of your network. Uh, Nazolan, also, once you meet, once you discuss, 
Uh, you can even organize together a proficiency test APT within your country. Of course, more, uh, more without scale APT from the global to the national uh, context, more laboratories can join because then we can share the samples among a larger number of labs from the same country. So it's very important that Nazulan uh, implement and organize, organize and implement PTs within the country. Uh, it's important that the Nazulan communicate with the chair and vice chair of the SILNET, the chair and the vice chair of Glossolan, the GSP focal point of your country, and of course with me and Lucrezia and the other advisors of Glossolan. So we can help you, uh, support you in your activities, and you can come back to us with your main needs and particular uh, issues that you, can, that you may face. Uh, and we also like to uh, ask you, as uh, once you create your Nazolan to let us know all the activities that you implement, all the needs that you have, so we can um, keep updated a web page that now I will show you. Um, that is like a, a good spot to highlight your uh, your case, what you need, what you who you are, what you are doing, and don't forget that we are here to support you. So whatever need you have, whatever issue you may have within your national networks. We are here to support you. So do not hesitate to ask for support to Glossolan. As I just mentioned, we have these um, web pages on the National Solar Laboratory Networks under the Glossolan webpage, when you can select the name of the country that you are interested in for the um, national networks, and you will see uh, another, you will get an overview of the national network of that country. We also publish two very important documents that have been translated in several languages, but as Lucrezia mentioned, if you want, we can uh, translate them into your local language as well, with your support. That is the terms of reference of the National Soil Laboratory Network, which summarize all the tasks and activities that should be um, implemented by the NASULAN, and some guidelines on how to establish the, the NASULAN, with very good uh, case studies from different countries of the world that uh, share the, the, the experience, the need that they face, the issues that they face, that may help you to overcome the problems that you may face yourself as well. Um, within the, um, the SILNET region, we have different, different situations. We have, we have countries where the uh, NASOLAN has not been established yet, uh, because you have like low number of laboratories, uh, there, there are communication problems, there is not enough knowledge on how to establish this network, or there is a strong need for financial resources to kick off the, the first meeting and, and activities. But again, please do not forget that we are here to help you. This means that we can really uh, support you in implementing the Nazarene activities, especially uh, regarding the first meeting of the network. Communicate with all the labs in your country, meet together, now we have this powerful tool of virtual meetings and we can meet all together um, online easily with no costs. And uh, we can start, you can start discussing within uh, your country among peers, among other soil laboratories and start sharing what are your experience, your knowledge, your needs in order to um, start thinking on how to tackle these needs. There are some other uh, countries that are currently establishing solar laboratory networks and other countries that already established already established solar laboratory networks in national networks and i can't ask them to give us regular updates i know some of you just wrote us in the last uh, days in the last two weeks um we are terribly overloaded now with the regional networks but um i will up update all the web pages of your country very soon in the upcoming days but as soon as you have a new activities, that is um, a meeting, a training that you organize within your country, any pictures that you make during the meeting, please send this material to us and we can keep your web page updated. And I also would like to encourage all the laboratories within the Nazolan to uh, become members of the Glossolan. Um, so we can be, uh, we can directly involve them in the global activities and also of course in the regional activities. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm sorry if I was very fast in this, but uh, we don't have much time, but all the, all the information are on the website and can be easily 
uh, found there. And um, also, please don't hesitate to write me and Lucrezia for any questions about these uh, national networks. Um, you can even use the chat. I'm here to answer your questions. And um, now I would like to um, move forward and uh, uh, present a few colleagues at the GSP who will present different uh, activities of the Global Soil Partnership that are related to the um, activities of soil laboratories. So I will um, like to give the floor to my colleagues um, about uh, the Soil Doctors pro program should be uh, no, Silvia and Carolina who will present, I think, uh, I see Carolina. Are you okay? Please let me introduce you, uh, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Carolina Rivera from GSP, who will present you the activities of the um, Global Soil Doctor programs. Thank, thanks, Carolina, for being with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Filippo, and thanks uh, to all CLNet for this invitation. I'm glad to present here the Soil Doctors program implementation. Mm -hmm. the implementation activities uh, that we had in the recent times. So just a reminder for those who don't know the Soil Doctors Program. The Soil Doctors Program is a farmer to farmer training uh, to, uh, to, uh, to achieve this uh, implementation of uh, soil doctors in all the countries to disseminate sustainable soil management. The organization of the Soil Doctors Program is all around a promoter at the country level and the interactions of a network uh, at, the, at the national level around these activities of soil doctors who are the soil the, the farmers uh, is, is experts in uh, in uh, in sustainable soil management uh, we had uh, uh, our activities uh, initiated by a questionnaire and this questionnaire was answered by all the the regions specifically the main interest in Asia, as you see, also in Africa and in Latin America. So from there, we could start from the, the, to know, better know the interest of the countries on the program. All the implementation activities that we have in this moment uh, are here. Uh, there are some pilot uh, countries and some pilot implementations uh, in, uh, in several regions. We have in Kazakhstan and uh, in Asia, we have two uh, specific uh, implementations, one in Bangladesh in uh, the framework of the Soils for Nutrition project uh, from the GSP. And we have a specific module on Soils for Nutrition. Uh, the promoter identified is the uh, Soil Research Institute, this SRDI and uh, Extension Services, the DAE. And another project in formulation uh, by, the, by Thailand uh, in the all the Lakang and Mekong uh, basin. Uh, so this project is ongoing. Other uh, pilots ongoing on Burkina Faso, Malawi, uh, Ghana, uh, Gambia, and, and Nigeria in Africa, and also in Mexico and Colombia and Latin America. So we are starting with all these, um, these trainings of trainers and some specific uh, topics uh, depending on the context of the countries. We, uh, in, in our website, we, you can find all the posters from the program and we are proceeding to the translations of these posters. We need to translate these posters uh, sometimes not only at the country level, but also at the regional level because we uh, need to reach the farmers. Uh, so in some countries, we need to translate that to, 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 the, to the really local languages like here, for example, in, uh, in Africa you see the language uh, Chichewa from Malawi or in Kazakh, uh, also for Kazakhstan. So uh, we are proceeding with all these translations. And uh, regarding uh, well, soil laboratories, uh, what we are doing here related to, to, to analysis or to laboratories is, 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 not, uh, is not very important, but uh, to explain what we are doing is uh, a soil educational kit. The, the, uh, the objective of these kits is not to analyze soils, but is more to educate farmers about soils, what are soils, and is more a qualitative assessment of soils. Uh, what we are including in these kits, we are going to see is very simple, some physical properties like texture, organic matter, infiltration tests, uh, so the soil structure, the aggregate stability. So these are all uh, 
process that you can do in the field uh, in a very simple way. Some chemical properties like uh, soil pH or carbonates with some simple reagents and the biological properties like the litter decomposition, the observation of invertebrates or the, the observation of roots. All these are very simple tests that you can do in the field. So we are creating these soil educational kits. In some cases, we expect to work with the reagents, uh, but this, uh, this would need the, the collaboration with the national laboratory because we cannot send from Rome uh, these reagents. We should collaborate directly with the, with the laboratories in the, in the countries. We could use sometimes like, uh, well, some mild eye acids for, to analyze carbonates, uh, hydrogen peroxide just to observe the oxides of organic matter, uh, sodium fluoride to, to detect allophans, or some pH universal reagents or other specific reagents. For the moment in the kit, we have some strips for the pH. And we are also uh, talking, uh, we had the proposal uh, from Thailand, from the Land Development Department of Thailand, uh, to uh, have the, the pH kit proposed by the LDD. And we are talking with Thailand with the possibility to uh, include this kit in our soil kit uh, that uh, Thailand uh, should provide us. Uh, so also in some countries, we are using very simple kits, like for example, to use baking soda and vinegar uh, to detect some extreme pH observations or something like that. As, as you see, the pH, uh, the, the soil kits from the from the soil doctors program are very simple, and this is what we want to do in the in the field, just to, to teach the the farmers on how to observe soils. So the way forward with the with the regional uh, laboratories uh, networks is uh, well that the GSP can provide the containers in some cases, and the local laboratories can provide the reagents. This could be the the, the arrangement that we can have. Um, locally uh, to have these these reagents, but for the moment we don't have any examples of that uh, ongoing. We are just starting the the trainings of the trainers. If possible, also the program uh, promotes soil laboratory analysis for specific soil assessments. We prefer to promote soil analysis in a laboratory than to do uh, some uh, very uh, not precise uh, tests in the field. So uh, in some cases, we, we, recommend, um, we recommend to go to the soil laboratory to do the analysis. Um, so to, to develop, um, also what we want to do in collaboration is to develop soil doctor posters for soil laboratory analysis in some uh, specific objectives. Uh, for example, what to analyze in soils, perhaps not only the the standard analysis that uh, that sometimes we do but also some physical or biological analysis that can be done in the laboratory and how to how to identify this this uh, this analysis and and how to do it how to ask for a laboratory for that and also another poster on how to interpret a soil, anal soil analysis we have this uh, request from many uh, farmers uh, many farmers ask us uh, for uh, for this information on how to interpret soil analysis. So we think that this can be a good collaboration also with the, the, the laboratories network. And uh, well, some additional information to develop uh, that can be done also in collaboration with laboratories, like for example, which are the crops requirements? Laboratories sometimes have this information and we can transmit it to the farmers. How to identify deficiency symptoms, um, and, uh, and, and all this kind of information. So uh, the way forward is also all the ideas that you can have from the laboratories that you can uh, receive from the farmers uh, asking you for, for analysis. We can develop it together and we are open uh, to work together with the, with the laboratory network. Thanks a lot for your attention. And here you have my email in case uh, of any question. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Carolina, for your uh, presentation and for your participation to the meeting. I think it was very informative and very useful for the labs. I will, give, I will like to give the floor to my colleague, Yusuf Ikini, 
from um, the GSP Secretariat will briefly talk about the GSP activities on soil mapping and the relation uh, with soil laboratories. Okay. Thanks, Jesus, for being here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you Filippo. So I will not be talking about only mapping, but also, also about the other things. And I will try to make some like uh, concrete connections between Glossal and an INSEE. I have just a few slides, not more than two or three. Uh, let me put them on the screen. Um, yeah. Is it visible? Do you, do you mm, see my screen? Not yet. No, it's strange. Uh, let me try it again. Okay, I think it says it gives it gives me some errors, but I don't know what is it. You want me to 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 share the screen? I don't know if I, I have it, but um, okay, I will start talking, and uh, in the meanwhile, I will send you the slides. Then maybe you can put on the screen. Sure, thanks. Okay, let me. Okay, I, I send you Filippo. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me start in the meanwhile. That uh, when you when you receive my presentation, it's just uh, three slides, and you you will put on the screen. Uh, I, I'm here representing the, the mapping group. People people uh, call us uh, mapping group, but we are not only mapping. Uh, we are doing much more at GSP. Uh, we, can, we can say the soil information and data, whatever activity uh, relevant, to soil inform, relevant to soil information and data, it comes under pillar four. It was, it was called pillar four. And now GSP is moving from pillar structure to like more action oriented structure. It will be soil information and data from now on. Ah, you received it already. That's nice. Okay, uh, I want to say something about about INSEE first. INSEE is in uh, international uh, network on soil info uh, network of soil information institution. It's um, it's an official network. I say official because all uh, soil information institutions national soil information institutions were appointed by, by the national focal points. So uh, it was established in 2015 and uh, the INSEE is mandated to build glosses. Glosses is the, is the umbrella, umbrella term for many, many, many of many, many products. We are developing a global soil information system, uh, which is called glosses and under glosses, uh, we have global data products. All global data products are country driven. Country driven means the countries are producing the national data sets, national maps, national data products, and we are compiling them into, into global ones. And we launch as global maps like GSOC map. We launched in uh, 2017, global soil carbon map. Now we are launching today uh, during the global uh, global salt affected soil symposium, the GSAS map, the global salt affected soils map. We launched GSOCSEC, that global soil organic carbon sequestration potential map, and we will we will be launching many others in the coming years. So GLOSIS is is not only uh, information system as as a system of products, a system of systems. Uh, we are developing national soil information systems, a global soil information system, systems, national data products, and global, global data products that harmonize global data products. 
What INSEE does, INSEE is mandated to, to produce and develop these systems, services, and data products. What are they? Data products are, I, already, I already mentioned, those uh, global country-driven global data products. INSEE is developing, each INSEE institution is developing the soil information system. Uh, they're also collaborating with us and contributing to the GLOSIS. The GLOSIS is the Global Soil Information System. So GLOSIS is a um, system of systems. As a federated global soil information system, we'll be connecting national soil information systems. And we'll be serving harmonized quality assess, quality check data. So, uh, why, why I'm here today, I, I want to make some like concrete uh, connections between uh, INSEE and, and, and GlowSolar, because we have been trying to, 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 to do that since the establishment of GlowSolar, because GlowSolar is too much, uh, it's, it's the best candidate to improve and to make the things better uh, for data and the system development. So what INSEE does, INSEE, uh, INSEE gets the mandate uh, from the GSP plenary assembly. What is the mandate? Okay, we need to we need to produce a global data set. What is it? Global soil organic carbon map. INSEE is mandated to develop a national uh, global uh, national soil organic carbon map. What they need? They need to compile data. What is this data? Data is is ground data in the first place. We need measured data. All in institution institution needs measure data. Uh, it should be fresh, harmonized, and quality assessed, quality checked. This is this is uh, these are the musts uh, of of the of the process. So what we were missing, we were missing uh, data in the first place because in institutions they are. Uh, appointed by the national national focal point. Uh, they have their own procedures, they have their own data, databases, they have their own uh, ways to, to implement uh, certain activities. The challenge here is insufficient data. I say insufficient because in the institutions, they have their own data sources. They are not very well connected with other, other soil information institutions or other institutions in the country. And another big challenge is fresh data. Fresh data is a must because it's a big pain uh, when we try to produce uh, a quality national soil data and national soil data sets. Fresh data is a must, for example, soil organic carbon. Soil organic carbon is subject to change every, every some years because of, of, of land management and because of, of practices because of, of land degradation or many other many other reasons. So fresh data is a, is a must. For example, uh, soil organic carbon map, the global soil organic carbon map, uh, countries produce their national soil organic carbon maps using data coming, sometimes coming from 70s, 60s, 70, uh, 80s, for example, because they didn't have access to, access to, to fresh data. For who, is, who is holding? and uh, holding the fresh data. Now uh, it's Glossolan members because Glossolan has, 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 has more than one laboratories in the, in the countries. And most of them are like, uh, uh, like producing fresh data. Another challenge here is harmonized data. Uh, when I say harmonization, harmonization is the, is the key for key, key process element for, for developing any, any kind of data, data product here. Harmonized data, like a harmonize, harmonizing units. For example, now we are, we are launching today GSAS map, a global soil, uh, salt affected soils map. The challenge behind was quite uh, frustrating because we started in 2019 uh, with GSAS map, but we saw that there's a big challenge behind uh, the measured data because we saw that uh, almost uh, like all countries using different approaches to, to, to measure EC, to measure pH. When we are talking about EC, electrical conductivity, the countries are using 
one to one, one to two point five, one to five, one to ten uh, soil water suspension, for example. So it was a challenge to convert one into another because we want to build a, a global product, a product to develop a global product, to produce a global product, a harmonized global data product. And that's the challenge behind that, uh, that harmonization. So we needed to harmonize data in the first place, the measure data to, to have a, a harmonized and good looking and nice global data product. So it's, it sounds easy, but it's, it's difficult to harmonize uh, the common one into another one to one uh, water soil suspension into one to 10 soil water suspension. So also units were, were quite difficult because uh, the Soviet school, like uh, old Soviet countries, they were using uh, a procedure uh, which was adopted by uh, by by Soviet Soviet uh, Soviet times, the Soviet school. And then other countries, the European countries, and then the countries in Americas, they were using a different different approaches. So it was also a challenge. So harmonizing harmonized data, data was also also quite a big challenge for for us, and quality assess quality check data, and Glossolan steps in here. Now they started working it, it in this uh, like uh, bringing SOPs. It was quite a big step forward for for quality assess quality check check, check data, uh, because uh, it was aiming to. Uh, standardize the, the the procedures, then then uh, bringing uh, like uh, some quality assess quality check data. So what I see here, INSEE in is compiling data, compiling data from from the institution uh, from their own uh, all, own own sources, but they are kind of disconnected with Glossolan, uh, Glossolan at national level, Glossolan at regional level, and Glossolan at uh, at global level. So uh, could you could you go to the next slide, please, uh, Filippo? So what I what I see here in the first place because this is the first time we uh, we, we discuss uh, the interaction uh, between INSEE and Glossolan almost the first time. So what we can how we can help Glossolan uh, to implement their the own activities? So we can help Glossolan to to develop uh, their own structure, infrastructures for storing, serving, and exchanging soil, soil lab information and spectral, spectral services. Spectral services here, I'm talking about um, spectral libraries, national spectral libraries, and national estimation services, because spectroscopy is much more than important than, uh, than, than before now. We are implementing uh, many activities in, in spectral domain, I will say. So what we, 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 we foresee is, uh, we want to do is, uh, we want to help countries to build their own spectral services to be part of, of or to be connected to GLOSIS, the Global Soil Information System. So we can help for, help with the developing uh, these infrastructures, because the uh, infrastructure development is quite uh, quite a business. It's quite complicated. It's 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 uh, it's very much demanding in terms of uh, technical expertise because it's it needs uh, uh, deep technical expertise in infrastructure development. So uh, we can help Glossolan. We can uh, help implement the harmonization of data using results of Glossolan, we can demand something like, uh, okay, INSEE is developing this, while we are developing some data sets, so organic carbon, so compaction, so pollution, whatever. So we can ask Glossolan, could you please uh, help us to, to harmonize this uh, information, this data in the first place? And how we can help uh, Glossola, the, these laboratories, we can help on capacity building, data processing, storing, mapping, and modeling, for example. Uh, Filippo, could you, could you go to the next one? How Glossola can help INSEE? Okay, in the first place, it was a big challenge, the fresh measure data, quality assess, quality check data, and harmonized data. These are these uh, these are all under 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 Glossola, and Glossola is the first and best candidate to provide 
the best quality data to INSEE uh, with harmonized and quality assessed, quality checked, uh, and then fresh data. Fresh data here also additional data because uh, I said that the country, uh, the INSEE institutions, they are using data uh, they own, own from their own sources. Own sources. Uh, most time they are not they are not complete uh, they are not complete they are incomplete because the data around hold by several other institutions in the country or laboratories uh, which are not available to INSEE. Would you please go to the next slide? Yeah. Yeah. The the question here is how we can work together at at regional at national and at the global level. So what, what will be the solution is we need to, we might need to uh, um, compose a joint working group with Glow Solan in C working group that they can, uh, they can be represented in, in each uh, network that the INSI can have a chair in in the glossal and uh, can have a chair in in INSI. they can they can they can also attend the in in the, the, the annual uh, technical meetings for example but this needs more development more discussion uh, deep discussion actually uh, before before going ahead and the question here is how we can connect glossal and in at global, regional, and national level. Now we are in, in CLN meeting. Uh, we can discuss how we can connect this, uh, this, this, these two technical networks, very technical networks, and make them uh, working together. So these are my questions. If the if, if it sounds good, if we can build a joint working group at regional level also, uh, then at global level. To, to make the things better, to make uh, the concretize the the connection between Glossal and INSEE. I think it was the last slide in the uh, three program. Huh? Yeah. Yes, yes, thanks a lot, Yusuf. Yeah, I, uh, I, I will be happy to answer any questions about INSEE because it was so brief. Okay. Uh, like yeah, we we'll put uh, also the link to the web page on the, on the chart. There's also a comment from the Glossal chair in the chat, so maybe you can have a look at it um see some even positive feedbacks on this mm -hmm. yeah normally with, now we should accredit yeah, the agenda I don't, I don't yeah. see a question but uh yeah just some comments yeah some comments so in short uh we need glow solar I say we, we is in C here, International Network of Soil Information Institutions. We really need to make uh, them working together because data is, is, is born in those laboratories and we need those data. And those data is not, all, is that, is that, is that easy, this data sharing, uh, IP, uh, the property rights, but I think we can find a solution because we are sitting in a, like a perfect, uh, we are in a perfect position as Glossal and an INC. We can enforce and encourage countries and laboratories to start working together. Like we can amend our data policy. Uh, we can put uh, Glossal and an INC together in the data policy. We can we can find ways and ways to make this uh, information and data exchange possible. May I make a suggestion? My suggestion is that we share information on the current members of INC in each country with uh, the Glossolan network so that laboratories in specific countries can uh, connect to their representative in INC and, and then we follow up in a country, country specific manner the discussion. Yeah, yeah, it's, it sounds good uh, because uh, the, the Glossolan, Glossolan, the, the next session of Glossolan is in November, right? Yeah, at the end of November. INC is also, INC, next INC meeting, seven INC session is in the first, or second week of uh, November. And we already have a slot for Glossolan to start discussing, to, to make, uh, to materialize this connection 
in a better way to to open a discussion or to, to trigger something i think it would be good also to have a slot in the glossola meeting mm -hmm. uh, to make INSEE more visible or inviting someone from the pitiful working group or to to make uh, these connections like uh, possible okay so we are the lot on in in the gloss next glossola meeting and meanwhile we send to the regions so in this case to asia the information on uh, the representative in INSEE, for instance so yeah whatever whatever we did do at global level it should be it should be done also at regional level because this is crucial for 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 the implementation mm -hmm. right yeah so i don't know if participants have additional suggestions on how we could uh, basically <laughs> strengthen data quality mapping production if you have any suggestion please write it in the chat I don't see any. Otherwise, we follow up by email. Yeah. So I would like to thank you a lot, Yusuf, and to thank also Carolina for being with us. Oh, Susu wants to say something. Susu, please, the floor is yours. Susu, would you like to add something? No. Okay, so thanks a lot, Carolina, and thanks a lot, Yuzu, for being with us. I will uh, uh, now share my screen because, uh, again, under item two, I also would like to tell you something. <laughs> uh, and it's about financial resource mobilization. So let me share my screen. So financial resource mobilization and project proposal writing. So as you might know, Glossolan is a self-financial initiative, which means that no funds are located to its implementation come from the FAO. All financial resources that we use to implement Glossolan activities come from projects granted to the Global Soil Partnership. So as a result, most of, uh, of our activities are global. So we, we mostly implement global activities in Glossolan. And this is because the GSP has very few projects on soil laboratory in specific regions. For example, we have one in the Near East and North Africa, or at the country level, we have projects, especially in, uh, in Africa. So Glossolan members are kindly invited to make an effort to mobilize financial resources for the implementation of national and regional activities. And uh, Filippo and myself uh, as Glossolan coordinators can help you in preparing the concept notes and submit, submit them to donors because we are very experienced in project proposal writing. So when you try to approach FAO as a donor, because still you can approach FAO as a donor, so your request should not be submitted to the Global Soil Partnership. We can just help you and facilitate the process, but the GSP will not give you money, okay? Money will be given eventually by FAO. So um, you, you can approach FAO as a donor by asking for a technical cooperation project, program project. Example of a TCP projects that relates to Glossolan activities and that actually were granted by FAO to, to the GSP and, and to countries are, for example, a regional TCP for the Near East and North Africa that uh, I wrote together with the national focal points for the region in 2019. And ultimately, it was granted in October 2020. And in this case, we are providing training to the national reference laboratories in 12 countries with a budget of $400,000. Another example of projects that relates to soil laboratories um, is a, well, a national one that we are currently implementing in Liberia. Again, in this case, I coordinated the writing of the concept notes and we are training and providing equipment to two soil laboratories in the country with a budget of $440,000. Why I'm telling you this? To tell you that uh, these are funds that you can have access to. 
and we are here to help you to get these funds. But how would you, could you apply for such a project? Well, first of all, you need to have a clear idea of what you want in terms of activities and what is your final objective. And also on this, um, the Glossolan coordinator, but also the Glossolan chair and the SealNet uh, uh, chair and vice chairs can support you on this in formulating your request and making a real assessment of your needs if in case you are in need of help. The second step, and it's the most important one, that really determine whether you will get the funds or not, is to ask your government, usually the Ministry of Agriculture, to send an official letter requesting for a TCP project to your country office, if you are applying for a national TCP, or to the regional power office, if you want to have a project with other countries in the region. So the letter should mention the problem or challenge faced by your country. And then basically in there, there should be the request now for getting such a project. So the request for a TCP project with a note on how this project will help to tackle the problem or challenge. My request, my request to you is to please uh, put in copy the Glossoland coordinator that uh, in the case of Asia also correspond to the coordinator of uh, the Asian Soil Partnership. This is me, so that I can do an internal follow-up at FAO with either your country office or your regional office. Then as a uh, third step, there is the preparation of the project document. This is a document that you cannot prepare by yourself because there is a template to, to use and there are sections that you cannot complete if you do not work at FAO. So again, in this case, uh, oh, I will help you in this case to, to prepare the document and to submit it through the FAO country or regional office. Once we receive the confirmation that the project is approved, we can start the implementation. Some additional information on the TCPs in this case is that these projects are assigned by FAO every two years. And now, like this year, there is the end of the biennium, so it's a very good time to ask for funds. So please think about what I'm just telling you and contact me by email and let's start the discussion with your country or regional office and, and submit a project proposal because this is a good time for you to get funds. TCP projects provide maximum $500,000 either if they are national or regional. That's the maximum budget you could get. However, they can be used to kick off activities, assess needs, and especially write a second phase project proposal. This means that uh, you can get $500,000 to really kick off activities and, and initiate something in your country, and then apply for a second project of $500,000 maximum again, that will allow you to complete the activities. Okay, so first two years activities with the $500,000, and we apply for another project that will uh, allow you to conclude the activity. The implementation time of uh, the project is usually one, one and a half year. Okay, so if we write it now, maybe it will start in 2022, it should end in 2023 or maximum by half of uh, the middle of 2024. This was my last slide. I strongly encourage you again to think about what you would like to implement in your country. Uh, activities cannot be laboratory specific, it should be national, okay? So you should eventually write a project uh, that will be implemented in more than one laboratory, okay? Then contact me also for form formulating um, your idea and uh, start thinking about contacting your government for preparing the official letter. Okay, this is the most important thing to do at the moment. Please follow up with me by email. 
Okay. Uh, I don't know if there is any question. I'm opening the chat. If you have any question, please write to me in the chat. Okay. Filippo, I give you back the floor so that you can move forward with uh, item. Sweet. Yes, thanks a lot, Lucrezia. Um, um, we'll now move to the next item uh, when, when we will discuss some of the main needs of the region and uh, some activities that may be implemented within the region. Um, as you may be aware, uh, we launched a survey before the SILNET meeting uh, that we were asking you to, to submit it. And this was about the main needs of the um, Asian Solar Laboratory Network. Mm. Yeah, we would like to thank the 38 um, laboratories who answered the, the survey. And, um, and what I want to briefly recap why we launched this survey. This was uh, important for us because we could have a better overview of the main needs of the region. Uh, of course, it's also an easy way to get information. And uh, we like to use this um, information that we retrieve to kick off the discussion on, um, on, on the activities to implement within the region. So we also have a clear overview of what are the priorities within the region. So the uh, survey was answered mainly by uh, public and um, um, and governmental laboratories uh, from university as well. And um, we also ask uh, if uh, laboratories were in touch with the regional chair and vice chair. And um, say half of you say yes, I'll say no. So we will we would like to find a way uh, to strengthen the connection between the SILNET chair and vice chair and uh, all the laboratories within the within the region, maybe through maybe through the support of the national reference labs. Um, but we will discuss about this later during the governance. We'll make some proposal on this on, on this regard. Um, I also we will we were also wondering whether uh, this was the if some of you already attend some CNET meeting of this was the first one. Um, yes, let's say also many of you joined the Resolan meeting and were informed about all the activities of Glossolan directly by Lucrezia or by Lucrezia or me. So as Gosman coordinators, but still um, some of you receive com direct communication from the national reference labs and the chair and the vice chair of the SILNET. Why we ask this? Because in, again, we would like to strengthen the communication within the network and be sure that uh, the Gosman activities are uh, implemented in the countries and then laboratories are aware of all the activities implemented by Gosman, trainings, PTs, as would be harmonizations and so on. Um, so uh, most of you already joined a previous uh, CNET meeting, and most of you said that it was a, um, a useful experience because it's a good way to share the knowledge and to um, to be trained. Uh, in the last uh, edition of so the CNET meeting, we also uh, include some training uh, session. During the meeting uh, this year, as Lucrezia mentioned, we split this, this session. So we have now just decision making while the training session will be implemented um, in a difference in separate sessions. So again, please remember that on Mon on Tuesday, uh, a training session on health and safety will take place. And now I will put the link in the chat and I highly encourage you to, uh, to register to it. The session will be implemented in English. Um, of course, Resolan are a good way to implement the activities in the region. Um, and we were deeply investigated why, uh, I mean, like about the PT, proficiency test. We were wondering whether uh, you already joined a PT in the past or not. Most of you already joined a PT. 61% of, of, of respondent laboratories joined a PT already. And as you can see from the right graph, uh, we, we there are different type of PT organizers uh, that like in which laboratories were involved. So some of you joined the Silnet and the Glossolan um, PTs of 2018 and 2019. 
while uh, some others um, join PTs organized in, at the international level by other organizations like ASPAC or WEPAL. And uh, some of you organize already, uh, already involved at least in the um, PTs implemented at the national level. And this is very important because as we mentioned already, or implementing PTs at the national level uh, is very important because we can have more laboratories joining the exercise. Uh, we were wondering about uh, the main needs of the, of the laboratories in the region in order to prioritize seal net and glossolan activities and work plan. And uh, it seems that one of the main needs regards uh, the training of uh, laboratory staff members. And um, in this regard, as I just said, we are implementing online training session. So uh, I, I highly encourage you to have a look to the capacity development webpage on Glossolan website well, information on all the webinars on, on laboratory uh, training are, uh, are reported. Um, also, many of you uh, stated that the, the main need regard the harmonization of SOPs of the standard operating procedures. And again, Glossolan is doing its best to, uh, to harmonize um, many SOPs uh, on different type of parameters. So chemical, biological, and physical every year. And we will discuss about this later on as well. And um, some of you also stress the importance of adopt more, uh, both su more sustainable and more modern methods for soil analysis. So methods that will reduce the risk for human health and the environmental risk for disposal of the reagents and methods that take into account the new cutting edge technologies, uh, technologies such as soil spectroscopy, for instance. And uh, also in this regard, we are implementing training session on soil spectroscopy. So please, again, have a look on the website of Glossolan. Um, and also uh, quality control is one of the main issues, but on all, uh, almost on all these topics, we are trying to um, develop work plan and activities in these regards. So um, we'll keep you updated on this. And again, please have a look at our website. Uh, regarding the trainings, we would like to uh, we ask which topics uh, should be prioritized in the region. Um, so we ask uh, participants to to let us know which topic they will be which which topics they would be more interested or more in need. Uh, SOPs so was the the highest uh, demand in terms of training. And again, uh, several webinars on different SOPs and the measurement of soil parameters will be implemented very soon. Uh, also, quality control, health and safety, see many other topics were requested by laboratories, and we will try to do our best to implement webinars on this session, on these topics. Uh, lastly, we were wondering, uh, we were trying to investigate the support and the level of awareness that yeah, local and regional governments have um, and provide to soil laboratories. So first we would like to, we, we were wondering if you think that uh, national governments are aware of the key role played by soil laboratories in providing uh, good quality soil data. And um, most of you said that they are kind of aware but we need to better inform them. Uh, in this regard, uh, we'll try to work, Glossolan will, like, will, will try to work on preparing some um, informative material, such as policy brief on, on soil laboratories or other uh, informative material of the rule, on the role of soil laboratories, in order that you can use such material to inform your government on the role played by your laboratory and even trying to um, mobilize and get some financial resources to improve your uh, laboratory in terms of infrastructure, in terms of equipment, consumables, training opportunity, stuff, in order to improve basically your uh, analytical capacity. So by the idea is that by informing your government about the activities and the importance of the activities that you, that you, that you, that you do, uh, that you implement, uh, they may support you more. And um, also we were like to, we were wondering which kind of support about the governments already provide you. And mostly we found out that mostly 
uh, governments provide uh, um, laboratory with uh, technical support. So equipment, consumables, and so, uh, while really economic support in terms of uh, hiring personnel or organizing that, like allocating resources that allow, uh, allows laboratory to implement uh, and organize activities such as trainings and, um, and indeed hiring new personnel is not really well diffused. So hopefully by informing governments on, on the soil laboratories work, we may uh, find new ways to get financial resources and financial support to laboratories. And lastly, we ask if um, you think that SILNET and, and again, and then also Glossan should facilitate the communication between the soil laboratories and the governments. Uh, most of you said yes, others say maybe, some are unsure about this. Uh, in this regard, again, just as, just, as I just mentioned, uh, Glossan and CNET will try to work on some uh, informative material and uh, and is always we are always ready to and and available to support you to communicate with your GSP focal point and the government to uh, in case you need any support from them. Uh, so this was my last slide to introduce this topic regarding soil uh, laboratory needs. Uh, now we should um, I would like to give the floor to. Um, uh, Christian, but I don't know if uh, Lucrezia wants to discuss first about the, the work plan. Otherwise, I will give the floor to, to Christian Artman, who is a, a Glossan advisor from uh, IRD France. Uh, most of you know him. Uh, Lucrezia, I don't know if you can we want to talk or we can give the floor to Christian first. Give the floor to Christian. First. Okay. We have an overall discussion. So I will give the floor to Christian Artman. Uh, thanks again, Christian, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Filippo. Can I share my screen? Sure, please. Okay. So let me find the presentation. Uh, um, sorry, why it's not opened? Let me, sorry. I will just have a look, open the PPT and try to share again. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems I have a problem, cannot find it. It's opened on my... She oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, no, she won't I, take I, it, I, no, no, I find it finally. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, please. we can see it okay. now. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Good. Thanks. Full screen. Okay. Is it full screen for you? Filippo? Yeah, we have the, the screen divided in different sections, but yes, we can... Uh, uh, okay, so perhaps it's the wrong... I selected the wrong one. Okay, I don't know. I will do that. Yeah, yeah, okay, this is good. Okay, excellent. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be here today and see many people that uh, I have met in real life. I hope next year we'll be able to meet again and work together and enjoy not only the meeting, but also after the meeting and before the meetings. So, what I'm presenting now is things related to interlaboratory proficiency testing. But, okay, you, you have been presented many documents that are made available for you, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, the video, booklet for recommendations, all this is made for you to work exactly in the same way and provide comparable results. But how can you be sure that you perform correctly? and you perform, your results are really comparable. So there is only one way to be sure of this, is to participate to interlaboratory proficiency testing to check by yourself your performance comparing to the others. I think in, for SILNET, many of you, if not most of you, have already been involved in an, such an interlaboratory comparison two years ago, and you know what it is. And if we had this first PT, it was just a start. Now we need a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, etc. cetera, uh, interlaboratory comparison. This has to be done on a regular basis. And to do this, we need PT providers. For PT providers, this needs 
not only to be motivated laboratories, but also skilled laboratories. And in fact, such comparison have very, for, the, for the PT providers has very limited cost, but you need some specific instrument, very cheap, that I will show after. And every, every lab can learn about how to, be, to produce such samples that can be used for interlaboratory comparison. Even every lab should already do it for its internal quality control. And on the Glossoland website, there is a, a document that is available, that is the basic guidelines for preparing a sample for internal quality control. So most of you, even all of you, all the labs should already use this document to prepare their own quality control samples. And it can be used to prepare the, inter the samples that can be used for interlaboratory comparison. So this is uh, the outlines of that document. I will show you the different aspect quickly and the instrument that has to be used. So the first step is the sample preparation process. Of course, you have to collect samples and you have to make an initial drying to be able to make disaggregation and also screening or saving the samples. Perhaps a second drying will be necessary. And after this milling, miling also, and this is why you need to collect, um, let's say 20 to 50 kilos of samples. And you must be able to manage such amount of sample to dry it, uh, sieve it, etc. And after this, in the sample preparation, there is homogene homogenization. And this is, for example, the instrument that have been used for the samples that you will receive in November for the PT about um, focusing on, on carbon that have been mentioned by Lucrecia. And you see, this is a, a barrel. And you see, this was organized by the British Geological Survey. And even them, they made it with a very simple tool that I think can be produced in most of the countries of your countries. After this, you need to subdivide that big amount of, uh, of soil to make, uh, to prepare some smaller samples, sub samples, and each sub sample must be similar to the other one. So there is a specific instrument that you see here on the picture, but that we, we can provide you the document to produce it in, in your country also, that is extremely cheap. When you have prepared all these sub, -sub samples, you have to analyze them, uh, uh, um, take some of them and analyze one parameter to check the homogeneity. This is homogeneity assessment, and you have to make a statistical test, but very, very easy, very simple also. After this, a time consuming part of the work is uh, packaging and labeling all these samples. So this can be done by hand, as you see on the picture on the left, or you can have some instruments that you see on the back with the bottle and the work is made automatically. But even by hand, it's more time consuming, but it can easily be made. Labeling and uh, packaging need also some instrument to seal the plastic bags and to paste and to prepare to print the labels in a standard way. And, but this is very, very easy. The last step will be the storage. Of course, you have to, to prepare it and, and what we, to, to store until you are able to, to send it. And you cannot necessarily prepare the sample immediately before the PT. So perhaps you have to store those plastic bags and think uh, about a room with a stable temperature and so on. One very important aspect is, of course, the confidentiality of about the samples you are using and sending to everybody. Your staff, yourself, and your staff, of course, must keep absolutely secret the characteristics of the sample that, have, that you are sending to the other labs. This is a key point. And so for, to organize such uh, interlaboratory proficiency testing, we need PT providers. And the discussion that we can have, even if only quickly now, after reminding you what needs to be done, is to know which laboratories can be volunteer to do the job and organize such PT already in 2022. 
And so I, I let now Filippo and Lucrecia and NOC manage the discussion between you. But thank you very much for the lab who will volunteer. Thanks for your attention. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Christian. Yeah. So I don't know if you, Filippo, Lucrecia, Nock, you yeah, want think... to discuss now and, and to identify volunteer labs or if you want to keep the discussion for later. Um, let's ask the, the audience. Is there any volunteer for the preparation and organization of, uh, an issue of a regional PT? We know that Thailand already did it in 2018, or oh, a long time ago. <laughs> Is there any other volunteer? Maybe India? What, what about uh, India? Ashok, are you with us? Because uh, you are hopefully soon receiving the equipment that should help you in preparing the samples now for the organization of uh, at least a national PT. What do you think about maybe leading the organization of the regional PT? Uh, Lucrezia, can I comment? Oh, see, hi. Sorry, Ashok sorry. is not here. Yeah. Oh, uh, he is busy in some meeting today. Okay. Uh, Ashok. So, yeah, that's uh, okay. We are also uh, trying to develop procedure, standardize the procedure. It's still not reached to the final point. We have received the equipment just now and uh, yet to be installed of course that is of course to be used at the final stage only mm -hmm. the most important thing here is that there is one iso requirement also iso 17043 one, uh, that gives uh, i mean for proficiency testing providers there is an iso requirement and there is a nabl that certifies that gives cert a certificate to laboratories that provide proficiency testing so we are preparing ourselves for that also, uh, but I think it will take some time for us. Uh, of course, it's not essential. It's not an essential requirement to conduct PT program uh, to get ISO uh, certificate, but uh, it is better if we also have that kind of certificate because it gives a psychological edge to the participating laboratories that uh, the, uh, the certificates that we are going to get are really uh, uh, accredited or recognized by the um, uh, accreditation bodies. So right now I would say that we are in the stage of doing it, uh, but please uh, give us some time, maybe a few months before which, uh, I mean, after which uh, we would be in a position to do, to prepare samples. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. I don't know if uh, Christian, you want to reply, yes. but uh, I'm taking notes. And I, I, I would like to make a comment because mm -hmm. ISO is one organization that makes standards and how to say the efficiency of a standard standardization body is the number of members. And I think this is why Glossolan is absolutely unique because there is no network that is as big as Glossolan and it's worldwide. So I think it's very important to go one step forward. And I would not like to say prepare our own accreditation, but having our own rules and all rules about uncertainty and the quality controls and so on. And I think if after this, we would like to have ISO is a next step because ISO accreditation is always very expensive. And this is why the spirit of Glossolan is to help each other and to make the things on a volunteer basis to avoid commercial relations between us. So I think if we can start, even if everything is not perfect, it's not a problem. We are all going forward together. So really, I would like you to encourage you to, to prepare samples and send them because this will help you to improve all the steps. And Michael Watts from the British Geological Survey that is preparing the samples for many PT providers. In fact, they prepare it and they sell it to PT providers that sell it to other laboratories. 
and Michael Watson, the British Geological Survey can help you. But I think you, you must not be shy to ask recommendation or comments. And as I mentioned at the beginning of, of the presentation, the document that Glossoland has provided is for internal quality control because all the labs should already prepare their own samples and improving little by little the, the, the skills. If you remember the first presentation we made in Bogor, in Indonesia, it, it was the stairs and the people going up the stairs. And you see, for the success, there is no lift. You have to go one step after one step and one step after one step. And I, I think I really encourage all the labs and don't be shy or slow down by any ISO because it, they are requirements that we probably do not need and we have to improve little by little. So, but, but uh, it's very good that you already received the instruments and that once you will be the trainers for the others too. Thank you, Christian, for your remarks. Um, so I'm signing up to India for this. I'm actually, they're still waiting for the equipment because uh, they're receiving the same equipment of Costa Rica, but the boxes got switched and we have problems of voltage now. <laughs> uh, yes. That's, that's an issue, but we are trying to solve it. Uh, but I'm taking note of uh, the potential um, actually participation of India in this exercise as sample provider. Absolutely. Then uh, I'm reading in the chat that there is also maybe the willingness of the Philippines to serve as a sample provider, but at the end of 2022, since they might have a project uh, that uh, will... Um, will allow them for the establishment of quality control material of a quality control material production center. Oh, this is great. Uh, I don't know if Gina wants to add something to this. And uh, I'm also, I also would like to ask Thailand if they feel eventually yeah, like sure. conducting this uh, exercise again. So leading the preparation of, uh, of samples for a regional PT once again. Gina, would you like to add something to what you wrote in the chat? Yes, thank you, Dr. Lucrecia, and thank you, Dr. Christian Hartman. I miss you too. Yes, I miss <laughs> Sorry, you so my, my Zoom does not have raised hand, so that's why I'm always late. Okay, so next time if I want to raise hand, it's okay if I just clap. <laughs> so first, uh, with regards to the um, contribution to the provision of uh, PT materials. Yes, under the National Soil Health Program, we already approved about um, 35 million US dollars for the improvement of our laboratories. All 18 laboratories of the Department of Agriculture. And part of this approved fund is the establishment of the quality control um, production center, reference material production center. NOC has seen this. We already have some of the equipments already as suggested also by NOC. So it's ready. And uh, what we need um, maybe is the technical assistance for the, so we will, uh, this is one of the activities that we can do towards the second and third quarter. The activities in terms of preparation, production, stability, homogeneity, all considerations for PT. By God's grace towards the last quarter, and that is almost the same time, we share the sample, Philippines is ready. Thank you. Many thanks, Gina. Uh, I don't know if uh, Thailand would like to reply to my call for an eventual second organization of the regional PT. <laughs> Sanida, I, I saw you in the list of participants. Do you want to talk on behalf of Thailand? Okay. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, PT, for PT in this year, Thailand already prepared a soil for PT sample, one sample. Um, if you remember the last uh, Tenali assembly, 
that my deputy director said Thailand can can support ASP can um, Zionet country about PT for one sample. So one sample. Okay. This, this sample is already this already passed homogeneity test. What we can perhaps do, Lucrecia, is after that meeting, organize a meeting with a smaller group of interested countries. Because yeah. I know that, that Sanja is highly motivated. And I was very impressed when I was in, in Bhopal. I still have a meeting, the, the shirt <laughs> you offered. This is why I'm missing also the real meetings. I, I can have more shirts when I have more <laughs> meetings. And, and so we can make a, a working group because Perhaps some people feel shy to speak because there are nearly 100 participants, but uh, I really feel that you are able to do it in, in Asia. You have the biggest countries in the world in Asia, you see? So it should not be a problem. Very big countries with many laboratories, it's, I think you will perform it very well. Silnet was the first interlaboratory comparison uh, with Latin America immediately after. So I really would like Silnet and, and Asia to be able to launch it next year because you have all the resources to do it. Don't, don't feel shy. So perhaps we will make a, a working meeting with a smaller group of people and, and discuss all the technical aspects that Sanjay uh, Gina, but I know in, in, in Indonesia, they have skills also and many other countries, you see. And you have some specific soils. So it's important, for example, countries having volcanic soils to be able to prepare volcanic soils and share around the world. India has a huge diversity of soils. So you can for sure provide more, more than one soil type. You have also mountainous soils in the northern part of the country and so on. So I think even some of your soils can be used for glossolan for worldwide interlaboratory comparison. So I don't know if you agree, Lucrecia, but we try to find a date to make a, a smaller working group. Ako yung, yung ano ko, packet. Yeah, so my suggestion, Christian, I very welcome this suggestion. And oh, no. I very welcome your suggestion. I'm taking notes. Um, my proposal is that we send an email to the network at the end of this meeting, asking for those that maybe here do not feel like talking, if uh, they would be interested in becoming sample providers. And uh, then we organize the meeting uh, with all those that express an interest. Yes. And yes. now let me give the floor to Pakistan because they would like to, to say a few words. Uh, Irshad from uh, FFP from Pakistan, the floor is yours. Irshad? Yeah. The, the microphone is muted. Uh, yeah, we cannot yeah. hear you. Yeah. We cannot hear you. I think there is a problem with the audio. Yeah, his microphone is muted. The icon shows the, the microphone is muted. Yeah, but before it was not muted. And uh, ah. try now. No, we cannot hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think there is a problem with your microphone. Okay, you will try again. Meanwhile, is there anyone else that would like to take the floor? about the organization of a regional PT, or if you have any question on the organization or also a national PT, if you would like to organize it in your countries. 
Yes, if we are organizing a working group about interlaboratory comparison, I think some lab managers who are interested to do it for their own lab or for their own country must feel free to join also. Because you can also start like this, doing for your lab, doing for your countries, or even some, how to say, neighboring countries or labs you are feeling friendly, having friendly relations. If you would like to start on a small scale and not preparing too much sample, but do it on a small scale, no problem. We can, as Filippo mentioned, we can advise for this also. Yeah. Irshad, did you sort out the issue with the microphone? <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. Please confirm, can you listen yeah. me? Yes, no, yes. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, I would suggest uh, I have a feeling here in Pakistan, maybe in other countries, we are feeling lack of coordination even at country level. I will suggest we may go for coordination at country level with respect to PT testing. We have initially as a first step, baby, baby step for PT testing at country level so that we may have a harmonization, standardization at country level. Then later on the next step, we can go for regional level PT, then subsequently world level, global level PT testing for participation. And this will create harmonization at country level. Then later on, we may go for better understanding of protocols at grassroots level for among all the participating laboratories. They, uh, we are uh, conceding lack of uh, harmonization at uh, country level uh, with respect to procurement procedure, with respect to protocols, with respect to working environment. That's why I will suggest we should go for, we should go for PT at country level for better understanding among all the participants. Okay, okay from my side, thank you. Yeah, I think this is the comment I just made. If people, laboratories who want to organize even at national level, a PT, they must feel to, to join the working group, even if you do not immediately do it for yeah. sending the, the samples at regional level, but to organize it, because you have also a big country, probably with many laboratories, and it's important to start you see, learning, as you mentioned, at a small scale and expand little by little. And we would be more than happy to do it. Yeah. And, and I encourage all the labs to go on the uh, Here in website. Pakistan, Foji Fertilizer Company. Yeah. 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 Here in Pakistan, I am from Foji Fertilizer Company Limited. We are uh, privately for, uh, extending this soil and water test, uh, testing services to the farming community of Pakistan across the country. So I would suggest that we may have a strong collaboration with government agencies at Pakistan level, then uh, certainly at a global level, we will extend our uh, expertise. Thank mm. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you to you. Thank you, Irshad, for your suggestion and intervention. Is there anyone thank else from the floor that would like to talk? If not, uh, the agreement was that we will follow up by email and we will organize a, a meeting only for those that uh, uh, wish to organize national or PT or national or regional PT. Okay. If there are no other remarks, uh, uh, I suggest to move to the next item in the agenda that is uh, the position of SealNet in Glossa. If you're all fine, I will share my screen. Filippo, I will work on the drive just in case I lose connection. So as you know, every year we, we ask the regions to take a position on decisions that uh, will have to be made by the global network. And uh, your position will be reported by the, the CLNET chair, but uh, you are also invited to attend the Glossolan meeting and express an opinion during, during the meeting as well. 
So we start from uh, SOPs, so the, the, a decision on the standard operating of uh, procedures that Glossoline should harmonize in 2021-2022. This is just some preliminary information or actually background information on how we have been doing this uh, work so far. So, so far, priority was given to the harmonization of soil chemical parameters. And only last year, so in 2020, Glossolan started to work on soil physical and soil biological parameters. Again, so far, priority was given to the most important parameters for soil fertility and the most used methods in the world. This is an overview of uh, the SOPs uh, Glossolan harmonized uh, so far. These are divided by year. So as you see, uh, we started with a few SOPs in 2018 just to improve our harmonization way and, uh, and, uh, and check on everything, like to basically improve our procedures. And then the number of SOPs that uh, we harmonize uh, increased uh, um, in 2019 and in 2020. So the SOPs you see here under 2018 and 2019 were already harmonized and published on the Glossolan website. Uh, we have some delay with the uh, writing of the SOP on mineral nitrogen, and the, it was decided to postpone the writing of the SOP on MELI-3 to 2020 because uh, we wanted to extend the, um, the scope of this SOP to include the macro and micronutrients. And in 2020, as I told you, we are harmonizing all these SOP that include physical and uh, uh, biological parameters. Now, um, this comes to a proposal that I would like to make because uh, five years after the establishment of Glossolan, we might be ready to make a step forward and start working on those methods that maybe are less frequently used, but have lower risk for human health and environment. And uh, this uh, gives me the opportunity to remind you that on the Glossolan webpage, you have, uh, well, the SOPs, all the SOPs we are harmonizing, the text that we are making available in uh, all lang as many languages as possible, basically, depending on the availability of uh, translators. And uh, for each parameter, we have a table with the list of methods that uh, you can use uh, to, to make the analysis and an indication on the risk for human health and environmental risk plus other information like uh, duration, average duration of the analysis, medium price, the level of technology, and so on. But I would like to bring your attention to the risk related to the, to the use of the methods. So far, we, are, we have been harmonizing all methods that have medium to high risk. So, you know, one of the objectives of Glossolan is that of promoting the transition towards the use of more sustainable methods. So in this regard, I would like to ask your opinion on uh, uh, eventually this proposal to look uh, into the harmonization of less frequently used methods, but methods that are more sustainable, that have a low, low medium risk for the human health and uh, the environment. So we do not, do not have a poll for this, uh, but it's just for your thinking because uh, um, um, in a few slides, I will ask you to make a proposal on the SOPs to harmonize and you might keep what I just told you into consideration when making your proposal. Uh, again, we will uh, make a proposal on the SOPs to harmonize. And while doing so, we will also try to identify regional leaders that can uh, look after the harmonization of these SOPs. So what are regional leaders and what do they do? Well, they should contribute to prepare the SOP matrix. Uh, I think you all know what I'm talking about because uh, um, Glossolan, every year when it comes to SOP, the harmonization of uh, methods, send the matrix to all laboratories in the network, one matrix per each method. And we ask laboratories to complete it, 
with information on the procedures they are implementing in their laboratory for that specific method. Then the uh, regional leader should harmonize the information in the matrix from the, the region. So in this case, you would work on uh, Asian information. And then contribute to prepare the global harmonized matrix and the, the drafting, review, and finalization of uh, the Glossal and SOPs. So really like the word document. Each SOP has the regional leader serving as global leader as well. Now, global leaders are one step on top of the regional leaders in the working group for one simple reason, that they take responsibility over the overall writing and publication of the SOPs. Um, so in this, in this regard, uh, the, the Glossal coordinators like me and Filippo, uh, when we wonder where where we are standing with the writing of an SOP, go first to the working group, but if we receive no response, then we really um, bring uh, the, the topic, the, the issue to the attention of the global leader that has to take action accordingly. Now, um, I would like, I would, now we get to really to the core of the discussion because I would like you to please make proposals on the SOPs that Glossolar should harmonize in 2021-2022. Uh, on Monday, we had the meeting of the AfriLab network. And uh, that's very luckily for you because uh, uh, we give you like a baseline for reflection. Uh, these are the proposals made by AfriLab. Okay, so you can also uh, have a look at them and think if you, if you, think that these methods are also are important for your region and make your proposal. You can either raise your hand or write in the chat. I would like to ask you to please keep into consideration that uh, we cannot uh, harmonize uh, the following methods and SOPs for the simple reasons that these uh, were already harmonized or are being harmonized now. So please do not propose the harmonization of any of the following. Okay. Um, I don't remember who has to help me with moderating this session. Ah, Sanjay. <laughs> Can you help me moderating the discussion, please? Sanjay, are you with us? <laughs> Tell me yes. Yes, my <laughs> it was muted actually. Okay. So, uh, so my suggestion is that we should invite uh, opinions from our uh, members regarding this. And already one uh, for, from this uh, Afri Lab, it is there. Um, so we can use the what Afri Lab proposed as the baseline. So for example, do you think that exchangeable acidity by KCL method applies to the region? Is it important in, uh, in Asia? Yeah, in our country. Yeah. Somebody is speaking. Sorry, you were breaking. Hello, what I'm saying is that uh, this method is not used in our country. But uh, mm -hmm. let us invite the opinion of other people also. Uh, total carbon by loss of ignition. Yes, this is also, uh, this is important, done. Uh, soil buffer capacity using potassium hydroxide available phosphorus by KCL. These are not the very popular methods used in India. Mm -hmm. So uh, your proposal would be for total Yeah, this is okay. What about the other countries? What is important in your country? What methods do you use or you would like a glossolan to harmonize? These are just ideas from Africa. You can propose other methods, huh? Silence. <laughs> Dr. Lucrezia, I am from Sri Lanka. I am Renuka. 
I think in our country, total carbon by loss of petition is needed. Okay, thanks, Renuka. Um, we have an input from um, Thailand and uh, Kintans. So Kintans uh, uh, propose uh, exchangeable uh, KC and total carbon by LOI. Let me put it on screen. And then- LOI -L is a loss of ignition, Luca, so you can delay that one. Sorry? LOI is lo loss of ignition, so you can delay the, the, that one. Ah, okay. Here it goes. Uh, then Thailand proposed uh, exchangeable acidity by- uh, Barium chloride, <laughs> can it be? Lucrecia, the line above is exchangeable acidity by KCL is also on the left side. You, you copy two times if the people would, would like the same, that's it? No, this is for Silna, this is for Afri. Okay, okay. I just reported the um, Afri lab inputs so to facilitate the discussion, to, to break the ice. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Thailand also suggests that we should use this opportunity to survey majority practices. Indeed, actually, my proposal, but this is more for the Glossal meeting, was to, to basically put together the inputs from the regions and run a survey to see uh, what methods are really used, uh, are actually used the most or are more. Yeah, because one of the problems, and I will um, show you in the next slide, that we are encountering for some of the SOPs that Grosso decided to harmonize is that very few laboratories use the method. Uh, Statis is asking for um, exchangeable basis, but we are working on it uh, this year, if I remember well. This should be with NOC, I think, exchangeable basis and the CEC by ammonium acetate. So we are already doing it. Uh, maybe what about physical parameters? Yeah, indeed, Lucrezia, we should like to, we would like to invite laboratories to, uh, to propose also methods on physical and biological, even if you do not perform these parameters but you are aware of some methods that you would like to harmonize because one of the outcomes of the uh, global assessment on soil laboratory needs and capacities was that uh, we know many all laboratories perform chemical parameters, but few of them uh, perform physical and especially biological parameters. So as also Nock suggests, maybe we should also try to focus more on these other parameters in order to enlarge the spectrum of possible potential uh, parameters analyzed by laboratories. So we encourage you to make suggestions, especially on these two uh, categories. Yeah, and this actually give us the opportunity to, to invite the laboratories. So basically all of you to please invite other laboratories that work on physical and biological parameters. Because at present we have very few laboratories in Glossoland that uh, actually take care of, uh, of the analysis of these parameters. So if you could invite uh, laboratories that do physical and biological analysis to join uh, Glossolan, that would be highly appreciated. I see in the chat that the Philippines and uh, also support the idea of working on water retention. Is there any other proposal for physical parameters? or biological parameters. One of the remarks of Africa was that most of the methods were already harmonized. <laughs> so that's why they made the few proposals. But maybe we can also propose like uh, less frequently used methods that are more sustainable, as I told you before. Uh, 
Sanjay, do you have any proposal for physical and biological parameters? I'm also, also asking, well, Gina is already writing in the chat. Uh, so I'm also asking Susu and Nock for inputs. Or actually Christian also in this case, because he's an expert on physical parameters. If you have any suggestion. Well, Lucrezia, we have already done bulk density, moisture, those things, the common laboratory methods we have already done. Now, if we, if it's specific methods you uh, is required, I think uh, uh, no. Otherwise, they would be very specific uh, advanced methods, not routinely used in the laboratories. The ones that are routinely used, we have already harmonized. But I have a suggestion in chemical parameters. We have not done available nitrogen, so can we include uh, exchangeable this uh, ammonium and nitrates? Uh, because uh, several laboratories in the world, they use uh, these uh, uh, readily available source of nitrogen uh, as available nitrogen. So this is a suggestion. By what method? Method means, uh, yeah, uh, it's a chemical method. We extract uh, potassium chloride uh, by potassium chloride, not uh, just now you can simply write uh, exchangeable ammonium and nitrogen. We may later on, I mean, we may invite how people are estimating. Mm -hmm. They're writing by case yeah. like this. Oh, okay. We are, not, we are not doing it already. Let me check. No. Okay. What do other labs think? Exchangeable ammonium and nitrate by KCL, right? You just write exchangeable ammonium and nitrate. Don't write KCL right now. I think uh, we may... Achha, okay, you want to be specific. Uh... Yeah, the more specific we are, the better, because for... So, but this is part uh, of uh, the exchangeable basis that we have been harmonizing using ammonium acetate. No, it's not a simple basis. It's different. Ah, okay. So it was a proposal by um, by Gina. Yeah, no, we already did it, Gina, for this year. Okay. So all fine with these four parameters for the chemical part. And for physical parameters, we propose only water retention. And then there was water holding capacity also. They were proposing, we are not doing it, right? So shall I add the water holding capacity to the list? And no proposal for the biological parameters. Are you fine with this? If a yes, maybe we can start uh, identifying regional leaders. So who would like to work on the total carbon by loss of ignition? Is there any volunteer to be in the working group? and represent Asia. I see, um, now I'm looking at the chat on who made the proposals, but do not get scared, you can say no, okay? <laughs> so, Linka, would you like to be in the working group? For Hello. the total? No, okay. Uh, Nini Tint from Myanmar, would you like to be in the working group? <laughs> she, she ran away. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay, Kintan, would you like to be in the working group?
No. Is there any volunteer for these SOPs, for this method? No, no, no. Dr. Lopez, I am Renuka. Uh, I would like to, in working group, in uh, total carbon by loss of ignition. Oh, thank you, Renuka. <laughs> um, what about exchangeable acidity by KCL? Is there anyone that would like to work on this method? Again, I'm looking at the chat. Linka, <laughs> again. Would you like? What about Nini Tin? And Kintant, again, I'm the only one that wrote in the chat. Who would like to work on exchangeable acidity by KCL? Welcome. Srinivas. Who? What about uh, uh, exchangeable acidity by, hmm, cool. <laughs> well, BACL2? <laughs> Any volunteer? Philippines can take uh, exchangeable acidity using barium chloride. Okay. What? <laughs> and this way, that this way. Okay, we'll have some inputs from the chat, huh? But uh, if there really... are other interested, sorry, members may take easy. Sorry. <laughs> huh? And then. I cannot read the whole name in the... In the yeah, chat. I asked for it. Yeah, it's Rabindra Adhikari. I will write in the chat. Rabindra. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, we also have um, uh, Srinivas. From, I don't know, but for which, which SOPs, I think the exchangeable acidity. Wait, let me finish with this one. Adahika. Then who else? Philippines is. I saw that, yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, Dr. Srinivas, for which method you would like to support? Uh, exchangeable acidity, Lucrezia, also Dr. Srinivas. But which one? Uh, exchangeable acidity. Uh, oh. mm. <laughs> which one? KCL. 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 In India, they perform by KCL. What? First one. Oh, I think, yeah. The first one. Okay, uh, exchangeable ammonium. I'm putting their sign guy. <laughs> yeah, you can keep uh, Dr. Abhay Shirale also. He is our colleague. Doctor, tell me again. This one. Dr. Abhay Shirale, should I write? Yes, please. Thank you, Sanjay. Okay. Adhikari. Adhikari. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Rabin. 
Um, what about physical parameters? Who would like to work on water retention? Should we merge these two, Christian? What do you think? Is it possible to merge these two into one SOP as they are related? I think so. It seems yeah, to me that water holding capacity is the same as water. Yes, yeah, like is a is driving from from the curve. Yes. Yeah. So maybe look. Let's say we can put like yeah, it's like just water retention curve also include the like information on water holding capacity. Okay. As far as I can remember, <laughs> in, <laughs> same. In, yeah, in Indonesia, they were motivated people for for this. So. So Linka. Okay. <laughs> yes. It's a yes. <laughs> I write your name, eh? Link and your team. Yeah, it would be a pleasure to collaborate again on this. Okay. We will follow up by email anyway. So if you feel uh, like thinking about uh, your volunteering for the position, um, well, take us some time and then we will get back to it. Also because it needs to be confirmed by the Glossolan, uh, at the Glossolan meeting. Now, let me go back to the presentation. This is just to inform, to inform you that all <coughs> laboratories sending information and authors are acknowledged in the Glossolan SOPs. Uh, indeed, at the bottom of each SOP, you have uh, a reference on, uh, on the leader, the global leader of the SOPs, and uh, the, um, and the leader can be one or more. Uh, and then in the appendixes, uh, we have an appendix with acknowledgements on uh, everybody that contributed to the finalization of the SOP, uh, a list of authors, and uh, a list of contributing laboratories. So also when you complete the matrix uh, that, the, that I send you or that Filippo sends you that were prepared by the working group, your inputs were very much appreciated and that this is recognized in, uh, in the dedicated appendix of the SOP. Now I would like to ask you your opinion on two issues that we encounter while harmonizing the SOPs 2020-2021. Uh, uh, one of them is that some methods are used by very few laboratories that completed the harmonization matrices. So um, question, can we still talk about globally harmonized SOPs in this case? Because uh, we receive very few inputs from laboratories and eventually shall we review our way to harmonize these uh, type of SOPs? So I don't know what you think about it. If you have any proposal on uh, on how to overcome this issue, shall we still use the harmonization matrix and produce the SOPs uh, um, in the same way, even if we receive a few inputs from laboratories? And then uh, a second issue is that uh, uh, the working group for some SOPs, and I'm especially talking about SOPs on biological parameters, but we also have the same problem for the SOPs on uh, Soil organic carbon uh, uh, fractionation and uh, the one on bottom count on the support of very few experts. And ultimately, this slows down the, the whole harmonization process. So, my question to you is if you have any suggestion on how we can overcome this uh, issue. It's not a problem of willingness to help by experts, but it's really a problem of availability of experts in the working group. So the floor is open for suggestions on how we can uh, um, overcome these, uh, these issues. So in the first case, do we still want to use the harmonization matrix and, uh, <clears throat> and still talk about uh, globally harmonized SOPs, even if we receive little uh, inputs. The second one is uh, how we overcome the fact that we have a few experts in the working groups for some method. <clears throat> how shall we move on, on this regard? Shall we maybe just ask Glossolan to identify one expert, a really top expert on the topic to take care of the wall harmonization in this case? Or what shall we do? We are really looking for suggestions. <laughs> Thank you. 
if there is any. Dr. Lucrecia, sorry, yes. I do not have breaks in. <laughs> okay. So can we now respond to the two issues? Sure, please. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I think the major objective why we go into harmonization of test methods, it's because uh, we want that our data at least within our region and in this case Asian region can be exchanged and compared with. And at the same time, as earlier reported by INSEE, we want to come up with maps. And of course, maps should also be comparable between and among the countries, at least again for the Asian region. So I always try to highlight at least for the Asian region because I think um, first thing, one of the decision that has to be made in the harmonization of the test methods is that uh, it should be common that method should be common among the countries in the Asian region because we want to come up with the harmonized uh, sets of data which we can exchange with given our geographical location. So there, might, there must be similarity in climate, similarity in land uses, and ultimately for land use planning purposes. So I just think that uh, for issue number one, um, we need to consider what is the most common method in the country. One consideration is commonality of that particular method between and among the Asian countries. And that can be made as the basis of our decision for harmonizing a particular test method. I believe the reason that other countries cannot participate in the harmonization of the test method is because um, um, they make use of alterna alternative methods which can be supported by their available equipment, facilities, and even manpower. So that could be the reason, but uh, still, uh, we do not lose track of the purpose of harmonization to make our data interchangeable and comparable across locations. So I think we just have to consider which one is most common and still we should proceed with the harmonization of the test methods. That is for the first issue. For the first issue first, Dr. Lucrecia? Yes, here, I put it here. So I reserved my comment for the second issue. So what does the audience think about uh, the proposal of uh, Gina? So we should just work on methods that are common to the region. Um, so, um, may I add? Mm -hmm. um, I just think that uh, as in my uh, earlier elaboration, what may be the limitation is the availability of the equipment. So this means there are countries within the Asian region that that uh, are more advanced because given that uh, consideration, so there may be grouping within the region <laughs> or transformation of the, it will be another technical job to be able to transform the result of one method, um, discovering the correction factor or conversion factor such that it can be applied for the other um, countries within the region. Because to me, I think our ultimate objective is, is still to exchange the data and map this data. I, I lost a part of what you were saying because the connection dropped. 
what shall I add to this text? Uh, that we should work only on common method in the region. Countries should be support, supported in terms of equipment for conducting the analysis. And what about transfer functions, conversion functions? Yeah, um, because if some of the countries cannot really support the method that is being used, um, by other countries making use of the advanced te technologies or equipment, mm -hmm. um, a, a special uh, study should be conducted to, in terms of uh, conversion of the results, transforming the results of one method um, to uh, closest estimate making use of another method. So it's really a transfer function, a convert correction factor, something like that. Yeah, basically this is what we did for the Turing method that included the, in the SOP, there is a conversion factor to compare the results of the method with those obtained by Walkley and Black, right? That's what you meant. Is there any other comment to, to this? What about the second question about the experts? Well, I was reading in the chat, uh, one suggestion is to spread the voice on Glossolan and uh, um, ask, uh, more and our collaborators. Um. So spread the voice and ask laboratories that do physical and biological analysis to uh, register to the network. What what else? Um, I was uh, making the proposal maybe to identify for the time um, being one. Yeah, one Dr. Topic Lucretia, part. sorry, I'm very Gina. Yes, uh, maybe we can talk about um, commissioning a group of uh, experts and. Uh, I don't know how can this be funded if this is uh, if this can be funded through TCP. So it will just be a special uh, um, a special project that can be submitted for funding um, to be able to identify the most relevant uh, biological parameters that uh, can be used for the region and the SOP. Mm -hmm. Then the the work of the because I think the other problem is that not even in the Philippines we made an inventory of our soil laboratories. There are very few laboratories out of 43. I can count with my fingers the number of laboratories working on soil biology. So if we commission a group of experts and have it funded through TCP if that is possible. So part of the terms of reference and output of this working group is to identify the most relevant soil parameters and uh, propose the most uh, um, relevant method to be used by, that can be applied to many of the Asian countries. So it's really a commissioning an expert um as it is now most of the laboratories are still in their decision stage um, whether to proceed to including biological parameters in their analysis as i said in the philippines there are only few laboratories doing biological um, parameters in their laboratories mm -hmm. so by commissioning a group of experts that would recommend for a most relevant sets of biological parameters and methods, then that can be one big, bold step to start with 
motivating all other laboratories in the Asian region to do biological analysis on some of the biological parameters. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. So I'm uh, writing three options. One is to spread the voice. Uh, to ask laboratories uh, to do this, uh, well, to do this analysis to register. Another one is commissioning a group of experts to do the work with a note on the possibility to write a TCP project on this, and then make specific requests to experts to, to do the work, and this would be on a volunteer basis. So no need to write project proposals for this. Um, I wrote them based on what is in the chapter. Yeah. Uh, is there any other proposal? If uh, yes, okay. I thought that someone wanted to talk. Um, let me go back to this for a moment because there was a note on uh, um, microbial identi identification for biological parameters. What do you yes. think about this proposal? Thank you. That's a proposal from my team. So this is like what uh, Africa is asking, right? In terms of species. Yeah. Yes, microbial population identification. OK. Is there anyone willing to work on this? If there is no one who is willing, Philippines is willing, but uh, I give the opportunity to all others who may want to work at it. But we are already doing this. Okay. Well, eventually, if someone else feels like uh, joining the group, uh, please let me know by email. Thank I would you, like uh, to move to the next uh, topic for decision making. We are going to finish like I, I guess 15 minutes late, um, but we try not to finish any any later than 15 minutes. Um, Filippo, can you help me on this to recap the training request uh, by the network? So one was on uh, the pre I remember the preparation of uh, samples uh, for internal and external and especially yes quality control and then we have a high demand for sop yeah SOP training uh, laboratory management health and safety and then equipment because those of spectroscopy that we are already implementing, right? Yeah. Uh, the more precise we can, you can be, I mean, like all the labs, uh, the better it is because uh, then we, we will be able to prepare specific uh, training for you. So like equipment, uh, are we talking about the general trainings or um, training specific, uh, specific to some type of equipment? Health and safety, is there any special aspect of uh, the topic that you would like to be trained on? Maybe, I don't know, like how to, to treat um, waste in the laboratories or things like that. What SOPs you are interested in the most? Also, I'm making a call for trainers. Is any of you uh, willing to give any of the trainings in the list? The language, I guess, it will be English. Or, as I said, if we want to organize any country specific training, so we can also do it, we can facilitate the, the process. I'm thinking especially to those countries that have a lot of laboratories and are very big like India, China, but yeah, also Philippines has a lot of, uh, of laboratories. Sanjay, please. Sanjay? I saw you raise the hand. Sorry, sorry. 
<laughs> again it was muted so what i want to say here in the very first topic the preparation of samples for internal and external quality control here i have a suggestion this is a, i think important topic but only half of the topic is covered what would be very beneficial for the people is to not only just prepare the sample but also if it is possible uh, to show the uh, statistical testing uh, results of these uh, samples for example suppose if somebody is a proficiency uh, testing provider so they prepared the samples and uh, what was the testing results for example let us say for available phosphorus so 20 samples they they had drawn from out of say 100 samples what were the results what was the statistical analysis and how the interpretation was done so these things are very important because this will instill confidence in the people who are newly now preparing uh, these uh, um, uh, samples for proficiency testing and also uh, doing the statistical analysis. So that is my suggestion that preparation of sample uh, for external quality control and as well as their testing results, statistical testing. Uh, just want to extend that topic. Thank you. So statistical analysis and testing, right? Okay. Yeah. So I also added like how to conduct uh, an interlaboratory comparisons and uh, what else? If there are no other inputs, um, is there any any volunteer for providing these trainings? Well, Christian, maybe you can do the one on uh, statistical analysis of the PT. Yeah, yeah, with pleasure. And I think even with Nock and the help of Michael or, or Rob, yeah. everything related to PT. After this, it's as you mentioned, uh, the people must, we can make a general presentation for people who are not aware. And after this, answer also some very specific questions. It depends on the request of the people. And as you mentioned, the request of the people has to be as clear as possible so that the training we're doing are really adapted to the need the people have. Oh, yes. Um, wait, huh? I'm reading in the chat, there are more inputs. Um, performance characteristics required for method validation and uh, Ah. Okay. I think these are all. It's also things. like sample preparation. I don't know if you already include it. Ah, uh, here I put it. Yeah. Ah, okay. Thanks. Okay, and then we will uh, think if any of you really, we, we are strongly encouraging the regions to provide trainers because uh, you know, it's, a, it's an exchange, like it's not only one way direction of the communication and the training, but uh, we, we consider you all great professionals and we are sure that you have uh, 
many things to teach and share with others. So please do not feel uh, shy. <laughs> Trust in yourself and uh, really volunteer to give the training. So some of you will already provide training, uh, but uh, you know we really encourage uh, everybody from all countries to to think about it. We we would not say no to you. You know, as long as you know the topic, uh, we really want you to give the trainings. Please. Um, now. Um, another uh, topic for decision. So we received a request from the Global Soil Partnership to work on range of reference values to facilitate the provision of recommendations to farmers and other stakeholders. Uh, let's start from range values. So what are range values? Uh, well, the GSP would like us to include in the SOPs the range of validity of the method. For example, method X uh, is reliable for, for example, soil organic content from a value to another value. What do you think? Do you think that uh, Glossolan should provide this type of information in uh, its SOPs? So if I hope that everybody is uh, clear on what is a range value. And uh, Filippo, can you please launch the poll? Now we will ask you to vote. So you will see on your screen uh, a window in which there is a question for decision and uh, you can say either yes or no. So do you agree on including range values in the Glosson SOPs? Yes or no? So I'm sharing the results as we reach the majority. So yes. So you don't do not foresee any limitation to the implementation of these requests. Okay. Second question. Um they also ask us to include in these reference values. So what is a reference value? Well, basically it's uh, the provision of an indication on the status of soil. For example, uh, values from zero to one grams per kilogram so indicate soil poor in phosphorus, for example. From one to two, it's a low medium content, two to three, it's a medium content, three to four is high and so on. So, do you agree on uh, defining these reference values? So should Glossolan work on this? Is the question clear? Filippo, please launch the poll. Again, we are asking you to, to vote and to express an opinion. So should uh, Glossolan work on reference values? that provide an indication of the status of soil. Okay. So the majority said yes. Do you foresee any limitation or obstacles to the provision of reference values? Is there any technical note we should take into consideration when working on this? Uh, Satin is asking um, about the chemical probe. So I think this refers to the reference values, right? So like, like how can we determine these values? 
Is this your question? You can also take the floor, uh, size at this, if you like, yeah? by opening your microphone. Ah, uh, training. Training on what? <laughs> Sorry. On reference values. Chemical concentration. Okay, so you are asking us to add to this light. Maybe uh, Sanjay, you can, who is my supporter on this? Sanjay, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can help me to understand the response of excitative. Yeah, I'm also a little confused. Uh, training chemical concentration. Uh. So if, if you can better formulate your request, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll add it uh, to, to the notes. Yeah, yeah, good, good afternoon, Lucas. Yeah, I mean, uh, chemical uh, concentration, how to prove the the, the chemical concentration. Uh, this is the training we need. So in terms of, I put it under the SOPs. So it's basically like to assess the quality of chemicals. Yes, yes. Like this. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, if there is no other uh, remarks, and if I didn't miss anything, uh, I would like to move to the last item in the agenda that is the governance. So it, uh, it will not take uh, long. So, oh, Silnet. Um, so, the governance of Silnet was defined at the first Silnet meeting in 2017. In that occasion, uh, we decided to have one chair and one vice chair. However, two years after uh, the launch of the network, we decided to identify two vice chairs. That's why the position is now taken by Susu Win from Myanmar and Sanjay from uh, uh, India. Um, the mandate for this position is two years and the terms of preference uh, uh, for this position are available in Annex 4 of the first CNET meeting that is available at the link on screen. At present, the governance of the network is, as I told you, like uh, hold by uh, Dr. Gina Nilo from the Philippines, uh, Ms. Susu Win from Myanmar, and Sanjay Srivastava from uh, India. So I would like, first of all, to thank uh, Gina, Susu, and Sanjay for the support they've been providing to the network over these years. We really appreciated it, and I'm sure that uh, the members of the network really appreciated it. So thank you very much for your support. Uh, before getting to the elections, uh, I have two proposals to, to make to, to CILNET members. Uh, the first one refers to the reviewing of the governance, no? in terms of, um, of positions. Basically, um, all networks about Latin, so the network for Latin America, count on one chair and one or two vice chairs. 
However, in Lapland, they also established a steering committee that is meant to support the work of the chair and vice chair. And this resulted to be extremely uh, active and efficient and uh, really to it, it made a difference in the region. So my, um, oh, sorry, this all looks like, I don't know why. Uh, so my question to you, is if you agree on uh, uh, establishing such a, a steering committee in uh, in your in your region so would you like to have uh, uh, the governance revised to have one chair one or two vice chairs and the steering committee composed by maybe uh, five active members of the network Filippo, can you please uh, uh, launch the poll? So again, we are asking you to, to vote. So do you agree on the proposal to establish a steering committee to support the work of the CNS chair and vice chairs? Okay, we reach majority and the proposal is endorsed. So thank you so much for uh, expressing an opinion and voting on this. You should see the results of these uh, uh, votes on screen. Then second proposal, we would like to strengthen the position of the chair and vice chairs in the region to allow them to do real follow-ups in each country and in the overall region. So in this regard, we would like our proposal is to review the terms of reference for the position of chair and vice chairs, and also have TORs common to all regions, because at present each region has, let's say like a different, slightly different TORs, and we would like to, to harmonize uh, things. Uh, the idea is that, for example, of uh, sharing information on the network, so really details on the laboratories registered in the network for a specific regions with the chair and vice chairs, so that they can send you emails, you know, like do follow-ups to the request of Global and when we see that countries or some labs are not responding, but are very important, important for the network, uh, for the implementation of work. So uh, if you welcome this idea, then my, Filippo and myself, we draft the revised terms of reference for the position of president chair and vice chair and send, you, and send them to you all for review. And then the ultimate endorsement will be made at the Glossolan meeting. So what do you think about this proposal? Filippo, please launch the poll. So do you agree on the proposal to revise the terms of reference for the position of CNET chair and vice chairs and to have TORs common to all regions? We all must reach majority, please vote. Filippo, I think uh, we can close it. Uh, proposal endorsed. Thank you very much. Uh, so we will proceed and follow up by email. Now in terms of elections, this will be very quick because <laughs> in terms of uh, chair of CILNET, uh, we have only one candidate. 
uh, Dr. Gina Nilo um, kindly recandidated for the position. Um, I remind you that uh, she is the current chair of uh, Stillnet. So, Dr. Gina, would you like to say a few words to to ask uh, countries uh, to resupport uh, your candidature to the position? before we ask them to actually express an opinion on it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lucrecia. And to all member countries of uh, SILNET, um, thank you very much for the three year support 2019-2021 for this very important undertaking of uh, SILNET. Um, and uh, I thank you for all the achievements for these last three years, but I do believe that there are still many <laughs> more things that we need to do together and to sustain whatever we have started. Actually, I'm happy with the proposal that was set by Dr. Lucrecia in terms of the uh, terms of preference of the chair to the seal net, because I think it is also important to us to work more closely than we used to do. And I think this is one important highlight of the proposal for us to be able to do it country from country. I like that. Because actually in the earlier presentation of Dr. Lucrecia with regards to the development of proposal for the Asian region, I have, I think, already emphasized that in my opening speech that I am looking of scaling up the National Soil Health Program in all of the Asian region because that program was already um, accepted here in the Philippines and it was given the full support of uh, about uh, 29.6, about 30 million US dollars just for the Philippines alone. But if you take closely at that proposal, it covers all the other uh, contribution of the global soil laboratories in all of the pillar of action of Glossolan. And this is one thing I would like to scale up at the Asian region. And that's the very reason why I am also interested to stay on as the SEALNET chair. Second, um, I have already expressed the challenge for all of our national reference laboratories to strive to become the center of excellence in the um, so of soil laboratories in the Asian region. And I think in all of our meetings, standardization, training, I think these are the key ingredients by which we can achieve center of excellence as a national reference laboratory and even member network laboratories for the Asian region. So let's all strive for excellence. I cannot do it on my own, but uh, we are here as a network to help each other. And the third activity that I would like to share with and intensify in the SILNET is really to build a strong network. And now we are here as SILNET, but I think we still have to build up from within our countries. So we have to promote the establishment of the National Soil Laboratory Network. And at the same time, establishing all these network laboratories to meet the global standards. As we are doing now, it's really towards working a global standards for our laboratories. So in all of this, I need your support, your cooperation. Let us unite. Together, we can do it by God's grace. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you very much, Gina, for these inspiring words. I would like now to ask uh, um, the floor, actually the participants, to express an opinion on your re-election. So do we all agree to have uh, Gina to serve as a CNS chair for a second mandate? Hindi na ako boboto, Beril. Boboto pa ba ako?
the almost rich majority. And you have full support, Gina. So congratulations and many thanks for volunteering to re-candidate for a second Monday. I have to give you a bad news that is that uh, we, <laughs> you will be alone so far on this because we do not have any candidates for the position of vice chair of the network. So my question to everybody is uh, if any of you feels like volunteering for taking up the position of vice chair of Philnet. If uh, yes, well, you can tell us either now or you can uh, um, tell us by email. Okay, and uh, we will follow up uh, to formalize the information. I don't see any expression of interest coming in the chat, but please think if you would have time uh, to dedicate to Silnet and if you would like to support Gina in uh, her mission to make Silnet great and help all laboratories in the region. Uh, there is a comment from Marife. I don't know if he said yes, I don't know if it's about if a potential <laughs> candidature or just as acknowledgement of the election of Gina. Marife, would you like to candidate for the position of vice chair? Okay, here they are making proposals. So they would like to have Sanjay again as vice chair. And they are, I, my understanding is that they are proposing Dr. Um, <laughs> from India. And they're all also asking Thailand to candidate. Um, I, I don't know <laughs> if uh, these candidates feel like uh, I'm writing it, it down. Eh? What, uh, what is the proposal? Thailand. So they would like to have Sanjay again. They would like to have Thailand to candidate. And then there is the proposal to have, uh, I have to write, copy paste it because it's too difficult. <laughs> um, the sir from uh, India. Was uh, we already contact Sanjay and I think he can really decline yes. to, to this, but we, have, we want to inform the, but about maybe this. Maybe after the standing ovation for him is changed. <laughs> maybe he can change <laughs> Um, there are also proposed. I am writing everything that is in the chat there. Eh? They're asking for Renuka and they're asking, asking for Pakistan. So, Sanjay, are you sure that you don't want to take uh, the, the position for a second mandate? Well, Lucrecia, I think I expressed earlier I would be happy if some new people become uh, take this role. Okay, Sanjay out. <laughs> Uh, Thailand, would you like to consider the possibility to, to become vice chair? I don't know if there are still participants from Thailand because we are late on the agenda. If not, Dr. Srenivas, what about you? Would you like to, to candidate for the position? Srinivas from India. Yeah, man. Yes? I understand. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, what about Renuka? Renuka, are you still with us? Would you like to yeah. candidate for the position? These days I am busy with other works, <laughs> therefore I, I cannot accept this position. Okay, thank you anyway. What about Pakistan? Who from Pakistan would like to candidate eventually? Yes, ma'am, I have mentioned uh, Pakistan. If anybody, uh, anyone interested from Pakistan, he can take the position of that uh, vice chair. Otherwise, I'm 
ready to accept this position depending upon the acceptance and the consensus that developed by, among the participants so we have uh, muhammad abbas aziz from pakistan that is um, available to take the position if there are no other candidates from the country is there any other candidate from the country Okay, Indonesia, Linka, or, <laughs> or any other colleague from your office, would you feel like uh, taking the position? Linka, are you still with us? Yes. No answer. What about Thailand, Chanida? Would you would you like to candidate? I am now adjusting about SOP for in the physical parameter, but for this position, maybe not now. Okay. Thank you, Chanida. Link, I don't know if you have time to think about it. Um, uh, Lucrecia, no. Not for this position, Lucrecia. I think I don't have time for this. OK. Thank you, Link. So my proposal is that uh, um, Dr. Srinivas, I'm sorry if I pronounce it bad, and Dr. Aziz, uh, share their CVs with us, and uh, we send it to the um, to the network for for basically making a decision, and then uh, we make online elections by email. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. We'll share yes, our yes, CVs, so. CVs with the network. Okay. Their CV. Thank you very much for candidating and for not leaving Gina alone on this mission, very important mission. So this is the closure of our meeting. Um, I would like to give the floor actually to uh, Sanjay and Susu, if they are still with us for delivering some uh, closing remarks, this is, since this is the end of their mandate and they might feel like uh, say bye to everybody, well, temporary bye, because they will still be with us <laughs> in the network, but not as, uh, as vice chairs anymore. So Sanjay and Susu, if you would like to take the floor and deliver some greetings, the floor is yours. Uh, let me speak. Uh, thanks, Lucrezia. And it was a really a very nice experience for the last two years. Though on some occasions I found that I was really busy, I could not really deliver to some of the things in time, but uh, it is really very good. And uh, I think uh, the persons who would uh, share, who would contribute in this process, they would feel uh, really very, very uh, good from inside because it is a very, very no noble cause. We are working harmonization of these methods and sharing of, I mean, the data could be interpreted throughout the world. This is something which we have been requiring since long. And it is the need of the hour. It's a very noble thing. And it was very good experience for me. Thank you very much. And I would continue to contribute if I am competent and if I have time. And that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Anjai. We will miss you a lot. Susu, are, are you with us? Because we are late. But I hope you are still with us. No, <laughs> I don't see her. Okay. I think she has, she has an issue with the with the um, with the computer. Uh, there is a last question in the chat. Look, I don't know if you want to address it. We are in a steering committee. So we will follow up on it by email as well. 
um, I'm referring to the steering committee. The question was uh, uh, on how these uh, will be established. Uh, we will write the TORs first uh, and, uh, and then we will think about a way to establish it. I think that the best way is again to make a call for experts that have time to dedicate to, to this um, work because really by reviewing the TORs of the chair and vice chairs and, uh, and establishing the steering committee, uh, we will give more power to, to these um, experts in the, in the network and, uh, you know, <laughs> power comes with some responsibility of work. So I, we want to ensure that uh, experts in the steering committee uh, can, actually, um, can actually do the work no? and, and help the chair and vice chairs. So we will follow up by, by email, but I think we will make a call uh, within the network for experts that have time to commit to this work. So I would like to thank you all. Apologies for the delay. It was super nice to see you, although it was virtual. Please do not hesitate to, to contact by email and don't forget to visit the Glossolon webpage. And uh, we will do a follow up on all decisions made at the meeting and also send you the link to the recording of, uh, of this meeting and the presentations that were provided uh, by email. Very, very important. Please do not forget to send me an email in case you want to apply for ECP projects. This is the time to ask for money to FAO. So please don't forget about it, and uh, we look forward to see you at the Glossoran meeting in one month. Thank you, good afternoon, good evening to everybody, and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.